hey hello we're back this is happening how cool is this i'll tell you what is it do you, hold on i should mute there shouldn't i should i should i mute here no i forget how to do this because it's been so long because i had the covids and then i bowed out and i forget i forget how to do things um i really want to obviously start off this book club by saying kp dubs bringing this up thank you so much for your 10 month streak how cool is that maybe i need to be a bit louder um we are catching up on last year Michelle! hello hello book friends happy new year hope everyone had a nice cold holiday season if you celebrate that's so sweet that's so sweet uh vaden is already dropping the chocolate sub which is hilarious because i ate another slice of my Ms. Moods. um asshole 96 just sub i've followed mm, not no pressure I, I slip of the tongue my bad um oh wait <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I didn't. Please don't feel coerced. Uh, no, Lisa, you got the vids. Lisa, how are you feeling? Unmute. I'd love a little chat. Lisa is our geek official now. Geek bomb book club mod official lead mod. Lisa, hello. Hello. You got the vids, um huh? Yeah, yeah. Luckily, it's not too bad. I just am really congested. Oh, shush. I'm really congested and got uh, a lot of coughing and sore throat going on, but I'm not that too feeling so well. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> We're all congratulating you for getting the vids. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're taking one for the team. Um, it is not fun and I wish you a full recovery, but, uh, if I could give you a gold star for participating, I didn't, I was like, there is no way I'm going to conduct two hours talking about a book out of bed. So you are the better person than me. I am pathetic when I'm sick and you are a champion, but Lisa is going to be, um, kind of keeping book club in check because She's really good at it. She's very on top of it. And um, I always love to attract and give responsibility to those that are good with scheduling and upkeep. So I've literally called her the upkeeper, which sounds like a wrestling name and I'm really about it. Um, I've also added Kate, Miss Necromancer in as our Goodreads, one of our Goodreads moderator, um, moderator, yeah. And I used, I've said that your, <laughs> what were you, your title is Steady Regular. <laughs> Okay. I'm just going to be making up like new titles for anyone that mods. Always regular. <laughs> just Kate is the fiver of the group. <laughs> Keeping us regular over here. Um, but the reason why I nominated Kate for that, I didn't ask her. Probably should have asked. I probably should have asked Lisa as well, but I was just like, boop, boop. Um, but Kate's been there almost from what, day one? How did you discover Nerdist Book Club initially, Kate? We're going down memory lane so that we don't have to talk about the book. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, it was actually because of Alpha. Mm -hmm. I had subscri subscribed to Alpha for Critical Role. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go check out the other shows. And I was like, oh, they have a book club going on. I think it was when we started reading The Philosopher's Stone. Yes. The correct title of that book. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so when I been around ever since and I mean I was really sad when Alpha ended and thus Alpha Book Club ended too but when you started back up again on Geek Bomb I came there and then I kept following when Nerdist went weekly then monthly then Geek Bomb came back and it's been a ride hasn't it um because yeah, Alpha been, started 20 it's been all over the place all over the place and we're just trying to keep conversation about books happening really that's my that's on, the only goal that I've ever had um but I was asked on board to do Alpha Book Club, which was a Nerdist uh, subscription sort of content back in 2016, uh, October. Our first book was a horror book and I'd never read a horror book in my life. So that was a real trip. Um, so what's that? October, we're over five years. Um, over six years, nearly six years. We're, this is the six year. Epic Cupcake. What? Oh, no, that's on, that's on YouTube. That's cool. Thank you, my man. Um, also, Ashhole, is your name Ash? Because that's a really clever name, Ashhole. That's my kind of humor. <laughs> what? Aw, oh, Vaden! Did you just see that, Michelle? Vaden just gifted you a gift sub. 
That's cute. Thank you, Vaden. Michelle, now that you're a <laughs> Geek Bomb Twitch subscriber, how you like those emotes? If you click the little smiley face and then you can see them. Uh, second name is close to hole, so it's double clever. Oh! Avery says, I joined to Nerdist Book Club and started back up early 2020. I love everyone's adventures with um, how they first discovered book club. Everyone, come to the book club Goodreads page if you can't afford uh, to be a part of the reading chat in the Discord. Yeah, we can pop it. I can pop a link in there so that people can join that. Absolutely. And I'll be posting it on the tweets as well. Because we want to get some good numbers for that. Nerdist got like 700 and something. I was like, that's amazing. But there it is. Cartography is pretty underrated in general. So we need to give cartography all the support it can get. Um, Shadow and Bone, what's her name, was a cartographer. They're out there. So anyway, um, everyone's story with Geek Bomb Book Club. Jimmy, you've been almost, you've been around for quite a lot of alpha, weren't you? Uh, no, I didn't see anything related to Alpha or anything of that effect. I only knew of you because of Half Hour Happy Hour. Uh, HHH. Yep. And then I and then I met you at the thing. At the thing. Yes, the recording. Yes. Uh, California, take my tax. That's what it was. <laughs> uh, Terry, you were Alpha Book Club days. Terry. 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 Are you there? Terry, you were doing Alpha Book Club days. Don't leave me hanging, my man. Unmute. How are you? Terry. 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 Bueller. Bueller. Ah, oh, thank you, Kevin. I'm in on two devices. <laughs> Oh, that's exciting. Well, maybe if you can chat, I'd love to hear when you first stumbled into Alpha Book Club. Yeah, uh, well, I was already following uh, Geek and Sundry for Critical Wall. Yep. And then they created Alpha with Nerdist, and I joined them, and then there was the book club, and I joined right away because uh, I needed to restart reading. Yeah, and then I gave you an addiction right here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the addiction started when Alpha left. <laughs> yes right and that's the thing i feel like as a community and the reason why book clubs are so important is because we want to read but a sometimes reading can be effort but b there's just something really cool and important about sharing a conversation we all read the same words and we all get something different from it and i think that's such an incredible thing um and if there's like a level of accountability which means that we we can read outside what we usually kind of read every single day i'm very genre locked <laughs> So with Alpha Book Club, I was reading horror books. I was reading thriller, mysteries. Um, we went back and did sort of like classic literature uh, and things that we studied in high school, like The Giver Shit and the uh, 1984. And even though they're a bit of a slog at times, the conversation that comes from them is what is so important. So I have always championed book club. Um, I do miss being in the studio with Rachel and Hector. We all consecutive, uh, consecutively agreed that when we shot Book Club each week, it was our favorite thing that we did. We absolutely enjoyed each other's company. We had a really amazing balance. Sometimes it was a little bit Hector, Rachel, and then me. Um, but I was able to kind of like understand their perspective, learn about it. I was able, able to provide like an Australian side of literature because a lot of stuff that happens is indicative of like America's past and I'm, <laughs> I didn't live it. I didn't, I wasn't taught it. So this like so many different perspectives were crucial and awesome. And I really, really, really loved that. Um, and so when Alpha stopped, I know it was a very tentative thing and I was kind of saying to Rach, I'm gonna do it for Geek Bomb if we're not doing it for Nerdist. Like you, I cannot be stopped. Uh, and she tried. <laughs> she was like, just please, just give me, give me a couple more months to figure it out. And then like nine months went by and I was like, all right, I'm back up, I'm doing it. 
Um, and I liked the format of having a club and a discussion. So being able to actually have a community. Because even though the Nerdist show was fantastic, it was just people voyeuristically kind of like watching three people form their opinion. And there wasn't as much as, uh, inclusivity because we were kind of like churning through our thoughts as three hosts. Um, and that's kind of like, that's a full hour right there. Um, but for me, like I always had an eye on the chat and I loved the fact that there was that interactivity with the chat, uh, people dropping facts, people having, um, you know, great discussions about how these words affected them. Um, we very much had a community where we were able to be vulnerable and share some like, um, you know, really personal things, but within a space and a community that was ready to lift people up uh, and support and share that burden and not judge and relate to it. Um, so that's why the format that I have for book club is very much wanting a community of like-minded people who fucking love reading, who get to talk about these books um, and put up with me as well. What's up, Kepi Dubs? You decided to pop on in, huh? I just... They, I can hear I can hear you. So if you're gonna not mute, if you no, that was unmuted. You can say hi if you're unmuting in here. Go say hi, Kepi Dubs. Say hello. Kepi Dubs, say hello. I'm gonna start calling people out by the way. So whoop, we're gonna get ready, finger on the mic, the mute. I could say anything to anyone at any time. Inclusivity. <laughs> Give me a sec, says KP Doves. No, uh, I'm gonna read out some of these comments and I'm probably going to um, ask you to share it as well. Avery, you said exactly why I love book club so much. It's amazing how many different takes one idea can occur. Has there been a moment that you can think of where you had one idea and then you heard another and you were like, whoa, blew my mind. Putting on the spot. Um, I mean, I can't think of any specifically, but I, I guess a good example um, is the fact that, you know, as you all know, I'm not a big fan of the Dresden Files and everybody else in this chat is. <laughs> yeah. So through this chat, I've been able to kind of see why people like the series so much, which even though it's still not my favorite, it's given me a different appreciation for it that if I read it on my own, I would have probably quit after the first one. So, <laughs> But Avery, you know what you've done for me? I have been reading these series with my blinders on, you know, and I think that having you go, yeah, but have you thought about this language and how these descriptions really sound? And I was like, oh, bing, there it is. Thank you. Like I was, I had tunnel vision for a lot of this. Um, so you were so necessary for me with my journey with a series that this is like my second or third read through. So huge for me. I'm grateful for you, Avery. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. Just throw in a compliment. Um, <laughs> how to read Australian. Clever girl. Reading books with the book club has introduced me to new books and made me appreciate books which I might not have enjoyed as much without other perspectives. Clever girl, which books from last year would you have not read but did read because of this club that you ended up kind of liking or having your perspective challenged? <laughs> Um, well, I think the Final Girl Support Group is probably the first one that comes to mind. Uh, reading it over, it I mean, looking at, at the summaries I'd seen, didn't sound that interesting to me. But I really enjoyed reading it, and I, I love to hear everybody else's input. Oh, what was that? I heard the noise, but I can't see it. Oh, there you go, Disco Cobra 2013. Gifted a sub to Pete Swen and John Doe 64. Thank you, Disco Cobra. How you been? Happy 2022. Uh, completely agree with you, Colleen, except for that book for me was Trigger City. <laughs> Especially because I didn't watch horror movies and I couldn't see the satire, I just saw the trauma. <laughs> that messed with me. Uh, Vaden says, yeah, belonging to a book club definitely helps getting people to try different things. Mistborn didn't seem interesting based on the summary. But after reading it partially, I got really into it. Vaden, what kind of books did you usually like? What is like if your, if you could choose one genre, what's your bread and butter? Oh, I like uh, mythology books in general, but 
I used to also be into fantasy novels. I just haven't read them in a long time. Did you like Cersei then? Uh, I never got it. I didn't read Cersei. The audio book was so great. It was like her voice was like liquid ambrosia, I said. It was just so delightful to read. So if you just need like an ear massage, Cersei's your book. Do you listen to audio, Baden? I haven't listened to any audiobooks at all. I, I, haven't, really? I, haven't, I don't have a subscription to, to Audible or anything. I've never really tried. I know you, you, you do that a lot while you're walking. And now you're uh, walking 66.6 Ks last week. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that's, that's been that's yeah, better just, than... <laughs> I've never gotten close to that. Like I saw that and I was like, oh, got a little competitive, Vader, not going to lie. I was like, when I'm better, I'm going to break that goal. Vader, Vader and I do a walking challenge every week. I'm uh, so does Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> sure. J- yeah, J- Jimmy's a champion. Jimmy just like walks in his sleep, it must be, because you'll get so many miles in every day. It's impressive. Anyway, that's what we do over at Guardian. <laughs> we hold each other accountable for walking. Uh, but I'm telling you right now, Vader, and if you are walking, Audible, it is just such a good pairing. Kind of like chocolate and wine. Kate says, I really, really liked the once a week format for Book Club 2, which is something that just can't happen as much with in real life book clubs because it makes a, because it makes a book seem less daunting to finish since you can read it in chunks. That's what really started to get me into Alpha Book Club. Uh, what about, cause we kind of, we're not doing weekly for this club. How are you finding kind of like a split down the middle? Nerdist is once we're doing twice, but it used to be four, but we end up doing two books over three weeks. How are you finding that adjustment, Kate? I find the geek bomb schedule is fine. Like, I mean, it's nice to have a week off because I'm obviously not only reading geek bomb books. But I just find it's a book that you aren't necessarily loving, but sometimes you have a different mindset after talking about it. Yeah. It's easier when you can read it in chunks instead of like, if like for Eye of the World, like I found that if we had been, been reading that more in chunks, it would have been like a lot easier to get through. You know what I mean? I so do. it's just like, it, it, it makes it seem, even though like I read a lot of books and like, having to just like have a month to read a book isn't a problem. It makes it seem easier. It's like, oh, I only have to read this much in a week as a, like, and can schedule around it, right? And you get pit so stops. So if you have a bad Yes, and then you get schedule input. Week. Yeah. No, I hear what you're saying with that. It's, it's like, like a really kind of watered down version of how to describe this. It's having your hand held throughout it. And sometimes you do need that. You need that encouragement. You need to kind of be like, all right, cool. I need help processing this. So you analyze it, talk about it, share it, get those perspectives. And it gives you like, as like a pit stop, it gives you that boost to kind of tackle the next part. I hear you on that. Good observation. Uh, True scorn. Chris says, I started following Maud on her first day of source fed. I I swear I spoke about poop on my first table talk a lot. Anyway, uh, it was book club. uh, It was book club. The reason that I joined the Patreon. Aww. Uh, Lord and Miller says, I just came across a little Fron photo bomb. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> what is my life? Um, Ashhole says, he who fights with monsters might be an interesting series for you. The protagonist is an Aussie human in a fantasy world. That is my life. That is literally me I, and my escapism that I have. That's actually really cool. I like that recommendation. We should put it in the Rex. Um... Gaia says, Geek Bombs Book Club has inspired me to actually read. I've been working through the same book since 2019. I finally finished it last night. So thank you. Reading is in my life again. The Book Thief. I've heard really, really good things about The Book Thief. Mm. That's cool. Vaden says, you know what? I'll look into it. I'll definitely try listening to some audiobooks, especially Cersei. Cersei's good. KP Dubs, you've only got about 40% of your voice from laryngitis. Prove it. What does forty percent voice sound like? Uh, kind of like this. That's not um, so bad. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I'm drinking hot cocoa from my pun intended mug I just got today. Let's help it a little bit. Um, I first found you on Alpha. I was I'm not much of a reader. I used to work for a bookstore and was probably the least read person there. <laughs> um, but uh, I they gave away a lot of free like advanced readers copies, and I had read the the Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. You guys were doing that, yes. so I listened in. 
I typoed something in chat, noticed it, thought it was funny, sent it as the typo anyway, and it was a poof joke that you and Hector laughed at for a long time. <laughs> so, that's ever since then, I'm like, okay, mod's my girl. <laughs> I, just, I just think it's so funny. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't read a lot. Um, of like 200 books I've read, probably 170 of them are Star Wars books. Wow. So, I know, I know. I'm trying to get into more, so I'll be. Timothy Zahn did such a good job with the Thrawn oh, books. So good. Yeah. Yes, he did. I love what so, yeah, Claudia Gray is my... bringing to Star Wars. Mm -hmm. oh, so. Just bringing to Star Wars. Oh, I'm gonna get off because my throat's going. But yeah, I'll yep. be in and out of book chat, you know, a couple times a year, but not every single week. That's fair. Yeah. It actually kind of goes along with what Jimmy was saying in the beginning of joining book club. I didn't want to read the books that the club chose, but I decided to not be a stick in the mud. Jimmy, what kind of books do you like? And what were some of the books that you would not have read uh, if it wasn't for Geek, the book club? Uh, well, generally, uh, I like to read uh, biopics and history books. You know, like uh, my sister gave me a book about uh, Freddie Mercury for my birthday. Yeah. Like his whole yes, life yeah. history. So I, she's like, I know you like to read books, so here you go. This is literally what she said. And so I just like learning about history because history repeats itself. So it's, yeah. it's always yeah. funny to see, like, stuff that's happened in the, hist in the past happen currently and be like, oh, this is just like this. This is just like this. And I'll be like, oh, well, you know, it's very amusing. Learning. Yeah. Yes. Uh, biographies. You know what, Jimmy? I'm so glad we had this conversation because we've – the th I think the closest thing we've ever done biographically is Carrie Fisher's postcards and something um, where she wrote sort of like the, the whole adult drug addiction. It was like, it was, it was biographical for Carrie autobiographical postcards from the edge. Thank you, Kate. Um, that's like kind of like the only sort of biography we've done, but I could totally be down to do a biography. I think that's cool. Ah, Good chat. It is cool. Uh, Avery said, I loved how we split up Dune. That was a perfect schedule. I agree. And I think it, when we talk about hand-holding, I needed all the hand-holding I could get with that book. So you're right. Um, ah, motivation. Thank you, Hayden. <laughs> uh, Michelle says, I can sometimes default to a cycle of comfort reads. And so I really love that book club helps break that cycle. So I'm consuming new stuff. Michelle. What is your guilty pleasure? What's your comfort genre? It's um, fantasy for sure. Um, but a lot of sort of middle grade, I guess, YA stuff. I really like the um, Diana Wayne Jones books and Tiffany Aching, which is Terry Pratchett, kind of Terry Pratchett in general, and then Lord of the Rings. And so it's kind of like a never ending cycle of those. Yeah, they don't stop. Um, That's a deep well. Yeah. Yeah. So by the time I've finished one like cycle, I just start another one. But yeah, especially if I'm stressed out or anxious, which has been all of the last two years. <laughs> so yeah. I know. Um, and books have been without that, having. I was going to say, books have been that peaceful escape, you know, and I think we're leaning into them more than ever. Um, yeah. And when the lockdown first happened, I was like, right, I don't want to try anything new because there's a risk that I might not like it. I want to go back to familiar hugs, warm, warm hugs. And so, yeah, that's like the comfort genre. I hear you on that. Mm -hmm. uh, Ups and Downs says, did you ever read the Realm of the Elderling series by Robin Hobb? We did not. We did not do that one. Um, I didn't really like Robin Hobb. But that was just the one book. And I went into it. It was my suggestion. It was been on my bucket list for about a decade. Whoop. That was interesting to know. Uh, Colleen says, I find it a little disappointing to only have one discussion on a book in a month. Because sometimes it seems like there's just too much to talk about in one sitting. Absolutely, yes. Agree. Agree, agree, agree. And it means that you can't get into the intricacies of it. You have to kind of, it's like a broader stroke. And... I don't know if I love that as much. I will say, though, the thing that I love about Nerdist is that maybe because you're not being put on the spot by me, the d devil woman, but when the chat goes off, I'm like, I can't even, like, you can see me glazed over because I'm just reading the chat and I'm like, that's brilliant. <laughs> People are saying brilliant things and the takes are so accurate and it feels like you're saying what I'm thinking far more eloquently than I could get out. So I love that point. Um, 
Kate says, I work at a bookstore. And while I do read a lot, I can guarantee that not everyone who works at a bookstore is a reader. <laughs> oh, I have a... Somehow I can relate that back to the patriarchy. Ugh, i got to stop doing that. Um, KP Dub says, I have gotten into some history the last few years. Things real people have done are often 10 times more astounding than any fantasy character. Oh, I could debate you on that. Um, I'm reading a book where a woman actually became a god. <laughs> That's quite impressive. No one can do that. Um, Kate says, if anyone wants a medical memoir recommendation, check out Hidden Valley Road by Robert Kolker. It's about a family with 12 children and 10 of them develop schizophrenia. Kate, why don't you just suggest that I get anxiety? Can you sell that? Can you sell that a bit better, Kate? Schizophrenia isn't contagious. It's genetic, so you wouldn't have to worry about catching it. No, no, no. It's, it's just interesting that... because, oh, I well, because th this family just had a ton of kids and it just happened that all of them, except for like the two girls in the family, got schizophrenia. But it was interesting because they all developed it differently because oh, wow. we, we still don't know. It's, and it talks a lot about um, the study of mental illness, which we still don't know a lot about because this took place in like the 60s. So it was kind of in They were still doing lobotomies of... in the 60s. Yeah. Yes. But this was like, we were just learning about how the brain worked. And because schizophrenia, you know, has so many different symptoms and presents so many different ways and different people, it, they thought they put a whole bunch of other medical illnesses and mental illnesses under schizophrenia, even though it wasn't. So it was kind of like in the infancy of neurology study plus what this family was going through because it's telling it through the one sister's eyes where she was like telling about because she was the youngest about all her brothers wow. going through it and how it affected them all differently and you know it was just, it was fascinating he also did a book called lost girls which was a true crime book which was excellent as well this is why i'm so glad i asked because i read that blurb and the reason why I said it was like anxiety inducing is because I was putting myself in the perspective of the, the caretaker where when you have that many people, obviously the two that didn't have it were probably like, you don't need as much attention. So fend for yourself a little bit more or they take on a caretaker role as well. So I was actually coming from the perspective of a caretaker. Um, and I straight away, as soon as you were like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, this is a, a mental illness here, so approach with caution. And I was like, so fascinating that I'm taking a perspective from a caretaker. And then you're like, this is actually why it's really interesting. And you really opened me up to the whole thing. And you're right. Like, mental illness is not something to be, what, to cause anxiety. It also goes into the caretaker thing, too, because, um, like, she has different interactions with different brothers depending on how their illness is mm. so some of them aren't great situations obviously so there, it uh, does have that kind of caretaker perspective from her and just her relationship with her mother and like her parents after this whole situation so there's a lot of kind of like the burnout that the caretakers do have to deal with so there was a lot going on in this book but it was just really really fascinating it was written in a really excellent way that didn't bog it down with a lot of like neuroscience jargon it made it very easily easy to understand i'm we'll be talking about that during project how mary but the term i'm i'm wanting to use is palatable science um and i think michael Crichton does a great job of that as an author i think that andy weir is so good at that and i as you've just seen, like a lot of the time with anything that's kind of like science heavy, I immediately have like an adverse reaction to it. Um, and yet when it's palatable science, like you, it's such effortless learning and then you can have like an extra level of appreciation behind it. A lot of writers make science. <laughs> I like balking. <laughs> bork, bork, bork. Um, moving back to the chat, Terry, before we get stuck into summer night for a little bit and then we're going to go over our best reads of 2021. Thierry says before book club, uh, I would stick to books made to TV and movies that I liked, like Jurassic Park and Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings and such. Um, yeah, that's a, like a, again, it's like that thing where you're going into something knowing that you've enjoyed it already. So it's a safe bet, right? <laughs> Chris is in the Discord talking about what my autobiography would be called. Abroad with Maud. I really like that. Uh, an act of Maud. 
inherent uh, inherit the garret of pineapples and people. <laughs> I do love pineapples. Did you know that there's one right here? It's a pineapple right there. Because <laughs> people know me. Um, Kate says The Devil in the White City by Eric Larson is also a prime candidate for a nonfiction book uh, for Geek Bomb Book Club chat to do. I love that. Love these wrecks. We should get wrecks uh, happening in our Goodreads group discussion. Disco Cobra says, I haven't gotten into reading yet. I've never really been much of a huge reader. Audiobooks might be something to start. Not just a fan of physical reading. Just not a fan, sorry, of physical reading. Uh, aside from maybe quick online stuff. Disco Cobra, I'm the same. I found that audio was a lot better um, because I could walk and I could be doing things. I used to only exclusively read and it's only in like the last sort of four years that I've gone to audiobook, but I'm trying to get back into the habit of reading an actual book at night. I have on my phone starting this year, set limits on apps. And basically the majority of my phone shuts down at 10 o'clock at night. I can't scroll, I can't open apps, I can't go on social media. Uh, I've only got access to a sleep app, my uh, audio book, but I want to do it so that if it's, it becomes just a paperweight, I can actually open a book and read. So maybe Disco Cobra, you and I can try and block out an hour at night to start reading, which will be cool. It's better for our brains as well, like not having the light. Hopefully we'll get better sleep too. Oh, wow. Disco Cobra says I've been diagnosed with uh, schizoaffective disorder, which is not fun. It's like having bipolar schizophrenia. So moods tend to factor into when I have bad episodes. I take meds and do counseling. That is fascinating. Bipolar schizophrenia. Oh man, that would be a really cool conversation to be able to learn, learn from you and about you. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. I really appreciate that. Moods tend to factor into when I have bad episodes. Moods are wild. Um, Clever Girl says, I relate so much to the main character in Project Hail Mary. He has some of the same attitudes that I have with my students. Love that. Uh, Kate says, Project Hail Mary is cute. It is so cute so far. I love the voice of the main character. Yes, same. <laughs> I knew we were going to talk about Project Hail Mary for three weeks. <laughs> Guy says, I took two classes in college that had the book club format. We met twice a week and discussed a few chapters that we read. During that time was when I realized I paid best attention to stories when I would take notes while I read. That's why audiobooks have never worked for me. It loses my attention in the middle of listening. I totally get that. Uh, audiobooks does have like a bookmark where it can kind of like capture um, a part of the book and you can make notes in it. But because I'm kind of doing, uh, I'm being active while I'm listening, it just doesn't make sense for me. But I hear you on that. And I actually want to start again while reading, having a notebook or putting post-it notes and actually jotting down ideas while I read. So that's something that Gaia, you and I can do this year. I like that. Uh, Thierry says, science through a high school teacher makes it more reachable and grounded. Yeah, okay, we all love Project Hail Mary. Fuck yeah. Um, and then we switched for the voice of PHM to Dre uh, Project Hail Mary to Dresden's voice. Talk about whiplash. <laughs> Kate, can you, can you elaborate on that? <laughs> Well, the main character's narration in Project Hail Mary is just so, like, sweet and funny, and he's just, like, you know, you just can't help but fall in love with him. And then with Dresden, it just makes me want to eye roll all the time. <laughs> and just... I... <laughs> okay, well, this is a great segue into Summer Night. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about it for the next 25 or so minutes. Um, they're both first person. If we are going to compare Project Hail Mary to Dresden, they are both a white man, roughly the same age, uh, that has a great responsibility. Sure. Um, it's interesting writing because they are from uh, both first person perspectives. Project Hail Mary is absolutely superior because this is someone who is in a situation, is learning about, it's like, like the amnesia trope. You're learning about your surroundings and then memories start to unlock. And so the story progresses by going back, learning about the memory and then applying it to the current story. Um, Dresden is more, I guess, sort of like it's a procedural series. Um, each book is an 
an excerpt of his life, his year. There is uh, being a detective, there is a goal, there is a quest, there is an objective, and there are almost like sort of side stories, character development and building, but there is an overarching um, storyline. And for Summer Night, what would you say that is, Thierry? The overarching goal, the through line, what is this about? Oh, you're at your parents' house. You're on different apps. I can do it for you. <sighs> um, ever since his girlfriend left town to deal with his new, uh, her newly acquired taste for blood, Harry Dresden has been down and out in Chicago. I like that we're talking about, I will say, I like that we are talking about um, male emotion and depression. This is a guy who stopped self-care. He lost himself. He, I know we talked about it, gosh, three and a half or whatever weeks ago, talking about how sometimes when you don't want to feel, you distract with tasks and it consumes you. So it takes up the, the hole that exists within you. But I like the fact that we're on book four of this series. This is a guy who's pretty put together. People come to him for answers. He has leadership qualities. Um, he's, as far as we know, incredibly kind of adept at what he does. Um, he holds the information. He holds a lot of sort of like power in terms of magic and uh, responsibility. So, oh, you're, you're all right, Terry. Do you want to jump in now? Do you want to jump in and talk about what the goal is, I'll keep talking until you hear this and then you can interrupt me and I'll shut up. How's that? Um, but I do like the, talk, the I liked the fact that he, uh, his friends kind of had to step in, AKA Billy the werewolf <laughs> and say, dude, you're not in a good place and you need to snap out of it. Well, not need to snap out of it, but we're also like, can we talk about it? Can we share the fact that you're not in a good place mentally? Uh, go Thierry. What I like about Star Night is that uh, unlike the three first books, Dresden is actually asking for help because he knows he's over his head. Because, and he's sharing a lot more with people around him. Because we've got a lot of guys in the chat. Uh, Darian, Jay Bunt Rock, I haven't had a, I haven't thrown the mic over to you, but I'd love to open up the conversation with either or both of you to talk about the effects of um, sort of being a man and needing to be emotionally stable or um, a kind of, you know what I mean? And you've got to put a front on, you've got to, uh, I know you're, I think, Joe Buttonrock, you're married, what it's like sort of having to be the man of the house and the provider. Um, but I, I really like to have a, a very open conversation, if you're willing, um, but to the men here to talk about the responsibility um, and the, in a way, toxic masculinity of not being able to feel emotions that you're feeling or express it or ask for help or sit in sort of like a negative space. So who wants to jump in with that? <laughs> you are demonstrating it very well, men. <laughs> you are Do you want me to talk about it even though I spoke about it? Because I could talk... Oh. You know I could talk, Mon. So I'm just saying. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, Jimmy, I'd love to hear kind of your take on um, this exact topic: the fact that Harry Dresden is is supposed to be on top of things, and he's not at the moment. But what do you feel like in society? Do you have, or like the the patriarchy in a way? Do you feel the society pressure of being a guy and not showing sort of weakness or vulnerability? Uh, I've never really uh, uh, felt pressure by society. It's more of felt like it was a family thing. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Because um, you know, you try, you you want you want the uh, you want the people to uh, get together. You want them. You want them all to thrive. You all want them to succeed. And sometimes they don't. And so 
when I was younger, I, I just, just remember. Your comment. I'm so sorry. This is such a vulnerable moment, and you're being so fat amazing. I just saw the Discord, and you called me out. You called me out <laughs> on something, <laughs> and I just glanced at it, and now I'm trying not to explode in giggles. And I just really want to be present <laughs> for you <laughs> and hold a space, I... a space for you to talk. It, but it's, screw it's okay, you Marty. for calling me out about. <laughs> I had to write it. I had to write it. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Now, like... that... <laughs> now that I got that out, um, continue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so back to the more serious stuff. Yeah. Uh, anyway. No, but uh, as a child, you know, um, if uh, everyone had certain roles when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. it, they had to go in said roles. If you broke that role, that meant that you needed to be disciplined. Wow. You know what I mean? Okay. So like if, if, if let's say I remember one time when I was younger and I was supposed to be doing yard work. Right. And I saw my sisters playing with Barbie dolls. Right. So I was like, oh, I want to hang out with my sisters. Right. So I went over there and I started playing with Barbie dolls. And the person that was in charge literally grabbed me by the ear and dragged me away and said, that's for girls. What are you doing? Right. And, you know, and had and threw me back down at the yard work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's more like it was forced upon me, you know, with the people that I lived with. It wasn't like society telling me. That's just my point of view. But there were gender like, norms sure forced upon you. I hear what you're saying with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And only when, you know, I got older and I realized that, the, that you know, ex to experience life, you have to try new things. Yeah. You know, and not be in that little rigid box, you yeah, know what I mean? That they were putting yeah. in. Yeah. So, you know. I actually had a friend that... share that with me as well. He said that he caught his younger brother watching My Little Pony. And immediately yeah. his gut reaction was to go over and turn off and be like, what are you watching? That's not for you. That's a girl show. And he halfway through kind of being like, what are you doing? And his brother was like, what? And he's like, do you like the show? What do you think of the the show you keep keep watching and had to check his bias to then not pass down that bias and i think that that's what we all recognize where it's like we what we learn we don't have to pass on so exactly exactly you want to be the change that you want to see in the world you don't yeah. want to copy with what was thrust upon you yeah vaden you want to add to that ah uh, sure so it's kind of hard to explain it or to see if it's that related, but basically, you know, men are generally encouraged to show like initiative, you know, to do things, start conversations, start things in general. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a little hard for me in general because I have, um, I have some speech impediments and basically it makes it difficult sometimes to start conversations because I have a tendency to stutter or mumble or do some other things like block. So basically I had a, uh, I used to be very shy, essentially, which would make things very difficult for me to talk to people. Mm. So essentially, I just didn't. And, you know, that was considered bad for me. Essentially, I was, you know, considered weak or just not strong enough, essentially, to because I wasn't Dominating. starting things. That, yeah, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would let people start and then I would listen and then go from there. And, and that would be a lot easier for me. But that wasn't the role that people expected out of me. Vaden, I have absolutely challenged you in the last two years um, to be vocal. Uh, and I, I think I've, I've absolutely pushed you outside of a comfort zone. But I credit where credit due, you have stepped up. Your growth with expressing yourself, with your participation, has been exponential from where I'm sitting. It's been so delightful to watch. So whatever you're doing, it is working big time. Um, and I'm really proud of you. Thank you, Mark. You're very welcome. I do, I do also notice that when you do take that chance, because you have a softer, you, you are softly spoken, which is a very gentle approach, which means I wouldn't be surprised if you have a lot of friends that are women, because it's a very gentle, like it's the anti-domineering thing. So like you actually provide that space for people to be heard. And when, you, um, when you're not talking, you're observing. And so if you're spending a lot of time listening, you actually develop a superpower. And those observational um, tendencies can be 
fascinating and like a really great thing to have in your artillery. But I have noticed that you have taken, you are again, really stepping up for the challenge and you go to talk, but because people have a louder voice, they get prioritized. And I, because I noticed that you're doing that, I am very aware of when you are wanting to talk and I notice when people speak over you and it is my job as someone conducting a conversation to make sure that you, like I shut everyone else up so that you get that time, that space, that platform to be able to share uninterrupted. And I've got to watch myself on interrupting as well. Um, so we're a good team like that, Baden. I think we're both making each other better, better people. So thank yeah, you. thanks. It's very appreciated. Yeah, you're doing great. Um, thank you, men. Uh, Jay Bunt Rock, Darian, I know that you're in the chat and I just want to extend an uh, opportunity and an invitation to open up about the stereotypes of sort of like men's mental health. And if you wanted to share anything. Yes. Yeah, I have a, yeah well, I'm actually uh, ex-Navy. I'm an ex-Submariner. So I actually was, my formative millions were in, a, in an enclosed all male environment, very alpha, oh, very okay. much domination. So I, because I find the struggle with that is mainly just parenting because uh, my wife's very empathetic and I get told all the time, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very, she, I get told all the time I'm too hard on the kids. So, you know, like modern parenting, I got to be aware of myself. My father was also military. So I'm trying to, you know, adjust to that. And I got to realize, you know, what I went through isn't really what my kids should be going through the same way. But you're a product of your surroundings. Um, yeah, it's uh, you know, on the submarine, you know, you have to, you know, they try to break you when you first get there. So it's very alpha male. They got to figure out how tough you are and all that. So it's just part of my background that I have to be aware of as I'm dealing with, you know, future events. I can, this is actually something I've recently discovered about myself and to kind of like, thank you for sharing with that. It is not, <laughs> there is a difference in sort of gender in this particular instance because I can compare your military existence to being a woman online. Hear me out. Because I have decided to have the career that I have and I'm a presence online, no matter what it is that I'm doing, I am in a way indirectly inviting feedback. So because I am a personality online, people will give me their feedback on me. The feedback that I get can be wonderful and generous, but it is the minority. When you are in a public forum, the majority of things that you get are being picked apart, having feedback on appearance, um, and it's very abrupt and it is very curt and it's borderline abusive. But I have been conditioned over the last decade to receive feedback about myself in a very blunt way. And because that has been the product of my nature and my surroundings, I now give feedback in a very abrupt and desensitized way, which, and I get disgruntled when I'm like, but it's just feedback and it's a critical, it's, it's critique. Like surely it shouldn't offend. <laughs> Why doesn't it run off like Teflon? Like, you know, my intention's not bad. I'm just trying to provide feedback and critique to help, but I don't have a softness behind it because that has been demolished over the time. So the longer that I'm an online media personality, the softness has eroded. So I can actually, and that's incredible, compare what you have gone through, Jay Buntrock, with your military upbringing and how you deliver um, instructions, uh, tasks, how you parent. It is just, yeah, it is a byproduct of how, how you got it. And it's up to us to sort of like readjust the dial because people don't receive it in the way that we do. Holy shit. How's that for a mind blown, huh? Yeah. As, and I totally, uh, I got the sailor mouth. So I always got to be aware before I start throwing the F-bombs at the children. <laughs> And, you know, it's not at them. They just comes out every other word just because that's part of my upbringing. <laughs> yeah, I hear you on that too. <laughs> um, <laughs> Darian, I'd love your input on all of this. Um, a little different, I guess, because, I mean, I grew up in the Caribbean. So it's like a different world from, let me say, the United States or other developed countries. 
So, I mean, was it why we? The, the, I guess the stereotypical thing, you know, we the men kind of we keep the emotions close and everything. But I mean, that doesn't mean we have that toxic masculinity kind of thing. I mean, like for me, I will have my emotions, but it's just like I don't share it with with the world, like you know, with people who are close to me. Uh-huh. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, I'll talk to my friends and I'll be vulnerable with them. But, um, one of the funny things is, um, as Jay Bontra was talking about discipline and everything in our country, the, the normal thing was, you no, know, I guess Americans call it again, spant. In Trinidad, we say again, a cut ass. A cut ass? So, cut ass. Oh, you cut ass. Yeah. So, what does that mean? you know, that's... <laughs> It's like it's, it's like getting spanked, but like you know, you know they use like you know something to hit you with. But so I mean I, we'll never do it to our kids. But me and my best friend we like we will make the joke like you know if our kids doing this we we will give them a cut to you. Yeah okay. But I mean we 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 safe to joke about it, but we know we'll never do it. I mean like our generation, but I yeah mean, yeah. Or at least you're finding humor but, behind it as well though, and the awareness yeah. as well I think is super important. Yeah. Uh, thank you to the men. I really appreciate that. Thank you for your perspective on all of those things and opening it up and being vulnerable. Uh, Avery says, one of the things that I really hated in the first Dresden book was how Harry would always say, I swear I'm a strong man, but... And then he would talk about his emotions. He doesn't do that as much in this one. He actually lets himself feel things by the end. I, I want to add on to that, Avery. I swear I'm a strong man, but I'm showing feelings now indicates that strong men do not show feelings. So it's really kind of, um, it's doubling down on the mentality that men shouldn't express. So I hear you on that, but it is better in this one. I mean, we're actually finally showing uh, an emotional depth to Harry, which I think is great. Kate says, I had a customer experience like that over Christmas. Customer wanted books about princesses for her three-year-old niece, granddaughter, whatever, because she was playing too much with her brother and they wanted to teach her how to be a girl. My very first toy, I have two older brothers. My very first toy was a Transformer, Starscream. I fucking loved that toy because I loved Transformers and I loved the Ninja Turtles and I was heavily influenced by my brothers. But I also loved Disney princesses and I loved my dolls, you know, so I was able to kind of flip between, and I loved having my dresses put on and I loved that how I dressed would differentiate from my brothers. But then sometimes I would go through an incredible, like, what do we call it, tomboy phase. I cut, like, my hair off. (laughs) In fact, I was on a soccer team when I was eight years old and the only guy who would talk to me thought I was a boy. (laughs) So I, yeah, I was flitting between it. And I think that's, what we're working towards as a progressive society is not placing our children into a box, but letting them decide their identity, uh, what they enjoy. And there is absolutely no harm in a guy being like, you know what, today I feel like being a princess. Tomorrow I might play some sport. It's like, do what you want, man. Yeah. Uh, Colleen says, I think my boys felt that a lot growing up. It made me happy that my oldest son didn't seem to have have a problem with my daughter-in-law painting his son's toenails. Yay, all that kind of stuff, fantastic. Guy says, my uncle wouldn't allow my cousin to play with any baby dolls, but he continued to anyway. He grew up to be an amazing and hands-on father. See? Uh, Kate says, these are the same people who put big bow headbands on girl babies to make sure they look like girls, but it just makes them look like complete dumb asses. Chris says, this half book club and half therapy session. Mm Mm-hmm, that's how we do things around here. Kate says, Vaden, your voice is so lovely and so soothing. I could listen to it for hours. Aw, cuddle, cuddle. Guy says, I'm sure having a discussion on Discord is pretty difficult compared to an in-person discussion. It's easier to talk over somebody. Be aware of it. Don't take it to heart if you do happen to talk over someone. I certainly don't. I'm the queen of interrupting. And I used to get comments about it all the time. (laughs) Avery says, my family was never super strict on gender roles, but I still see the effects of societal expectations sometimes. Like, my brother sometimes feels that he has to justify liking something. And I always try to remind him that he's allowed to enjoy the thing. Yeah. 
it's weird that we check ourselves as well. No, no, this is okay. Or, you know, just reminding everyone that no alarms over here. <laughs> everything's, everything's great. Big Brother's watching. Yeah. I feel like my video is a little out of focus. Maybe that's my eyes. Hey, Garrett. First time chatter, long time listener. Garrett Billy J8. Garrett's, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'm Maud Garrett. Welcome to the Garrett's. Maud, check me out, please. I'm about to go live around eight. Looking for the answers I know are out there. Well, if your name's Garrett, I believe in you. I, got, I think you got this. What's eight o'clock when? When? KP Dubs says, many of my customers at work are shopping for traditionally male things. Hunting, fishing, boxing, etc. It drives me insane when they blow off my female employees instead of accepting their advice or experience. <laughs> yep. I will say one of my big things that I used to do in my early 20s that I thought was such a baller move. I would buy a guy a drink. <laughs> Can I get you a drink? And they'd be like, what? It's like, yeah, I, I, I'm capable of doing that. I have the means. Let me buy you a drink. So that was kind of not, that was kind of cool. Could I break that down into sort of a power dynamic? Yeah, maybe. But I also like breaking the norm on it. Godless monkey, hello. Skull Cleaver says, I just got home from work. Glad to make it. Sounds like a good discussion already. Lovely to have you. Ashel says, I have aggressively bottled emotions, so I can't comment on much, but I also support others opening up. <laughs> oh, aggressively bottled emotions? Problem with bottling emotions is that the bottle has a limit, and so as soon as you hit that limit, it's got to come out. And I have seen that happen where the smallest thing will set it's happened to a male friends of mine will set them off and everyone's like holy shit it's not even a big deal and i'm here going no 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 it's not this one thing that they're that mad about it has been months of things that is all coming to fruition now so don't say that he's overreacting it's just that this was the catalyst this was the straw that broke the camel's back and the reason why they've been pushed to this point we need to recognize the last few months of behavior that has caused this reaction so that's because I hate that the reason why you bottle is and then when you blow up and you explode and people think it's about the, the, the one thing that set you off. <laughs> Sorry if I if I'm sort of showing seeing you. Dead mantles and cuts. <laughs> um, but what's really hard is when you do have that like that huge reaction because it's it is all of the bottle exploding out. People don't know how, they can't associate or understand that um, it's not from that one thing. They're only applying it to that one thing. So then what they get to do, because they don't understand that re reaction and response, is they get to shame it. They get to say, you're overreacting. You're unnecessarily angry. You are exploding over nothing. And it's phrased, you can uh, only put so much in a toilet before it overflows. Exactly. you got to flush after... Every poop. Maybe if it's yellow, let it mellow because of the environment. But yeah. Um, Clever Girl says, my, uh, my next to the youngest son would hold things until he exploded. And I think it's really tough, but it's like we can't then shame when the emotion is expressed just because it's expressed in a very aggressive way because it is the, you know, the whole, the, the, the full amount um, but at the same time, if your explosion is actually hurtful and dangerous, there's a problem with that as well, because you're not, you actually do not then have a capacity to express emotion in a healthy way. Either way, suppressing emotions is not healthy. Exploding emotions is not healthy. So it's finding that balance as well. Oh, good Lord. Is it obvious that my mum was a psychologist? Yeah. Um... Lisa says, I was um, close in age with my younger brother, so I played with my dolls and his toys together. Yeah, absolutely. Kate says, when I'm uh, getting disgusted and judging someone, my eyes narrow. <laughs> my, believe me, my eyes were nearly slits after she said that. <laughs> yeah, Kate, you and I are the kind of people where we should not play poker. Mm -mm. I cannot. If I feel it, I show it. Um... Clever Girl says, I have some very aggressive siblings. Some of us would never have said anything if we hadn't interrupted. Hmm, interesting. Um, oh, <laughs> Garrett Navarro. 
Um, Jay Bunt Rock says, my wife has five siblings. At family functions, everyone just shouts over everyone. Yeah, that, I know that family dynamic very well. Um, Godless Monkey says, is it an Aussie girl thing, buying dudes drinks? No, it was a confident girl thing. Um, I, I liked to challenge the norm. In Australia, though, we're pretty Dutch. Maybe after the first date, everything split equally. That's why it's like I really struggled with dating in America because I would have women sit me down and be like, sweetie, the reason why you're single is because you are not making them treat you like a princess. And I'm like, I don't want to be a princess, but they should pay for you. You know, you get your nails done, you get your hair done, you look a particular way, and then they should pay for that. And I was like, that's the worst fucking take I've ever heard. I hate everything that you're saying. <laughs> that is not how I roll. If I respect someone and they respect me, that's all we need. But if I'm making money, I fucking get to choose how I spend that. A man's job is to not pay for everything of mine just so that, because then the dynamic is, well, I bought you dinner, therefore you have to look hot. Ah, fuck that noise. Blech. Gory says, I'm lurking, but book chat is hitting me on so many levels. Hi, Gory. Um, I'm always behind in the chat. Uh, we have hit the second hour though. We need to wrap up our summer night discussion. We've done a great job. We just spoke about mental health. Um, oh, we're talking about exploding the motions. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, having a breakdown is usually years in the making. It's not just one thing. No, it's, it's. It's, it's almost like you're conditioned to not pick and choose your battles. You're like, this is a small thing, so I won't make it a deal. Ah, that's a small thing, so I won't make it a deal. But then when you've been doing that for years, you're like, why am I letting all this stuff go and people continue to treat me like shit? When do I get to stand up for me? And that comes out uh, usually in a big way. I, I've had to have uncomfortable conversations, but I'm the kind of person where it's like, especially if I have friends with anxiety, I'm like, I will tell you, I'm the kind of person that will not bury an issue. If it's not a big deal, then that's my shit. You know, I can let that go and I need to be able to let that go. But if it gets to a point where it is affecting me, I'm just like, I need you to trust me that I will say something and I'm not going to come at you like an attack. I'm going to tell you how I feel and how your actions have affected me and then discuss or talk about sort of a way where we can minimize that from happening again. Um, but I think a big thing is if I'm not saying anything, then there is no problem. But that's on me to be able to communicate it. And so I need to have tough conversations with friends where I'm like, hey, this isn't one for me to come to be able to move on. This kind of bummed me out. This behavior impacted me in a not so great way. I need you to be aware of that. I don't think your intent was bad. I just want you to make you aware of how it impacted me so that if this comes up again, you know that this is how it's going to affect me. And a lot of the time it's a big a lot of apologies on both ways. Um, I also don't want to pull up the small things so that someone, and I've had problems with this in relationships in my past, where I'm conditioning a person on how I wish to be treated and spoken to, et cetera, et cetera. And so they're like, fuck, you've just placed me in a minefield where I don't know which step to take because I don't know what's right and wrong according to you. So that's why you had to pick and choose your battles as well. If it's not a big deal, let it go. Uh, Ashal says, I make sure my outbursts are never angry. I just occasionally get drunk and explode into drunken tears for a few hours. Uh, hands up in the comments if you've done that. If you've gotten drunk and it all came out of your face. Yeah. <laughs> <Blah. laughs> Me. Oh, Colleen says, this is such a good discussion. Yay. <laughs> Darren. <Yeah. laughs> no shame in that. We've all bloody done it. <laughs> I'm going to accept that comment as well. <laughs> oh, really? Is that, oh, there's something to pick about that, Darian. It's the seeing people happy that, mm. we're talking in the Discord, sorry. Uh, Manta173, hello Manta, says, when I boil over at shedding a tear over an emotional moment in a book or movie, you know what, let it out. This is the thing, sometimes you just need a good cry. and Whatever it takes to get there, great. 
Um, a lot of people sharing stories, which is beautiful. Colleen says, I open doors for men. Yeah. yeah. Everyone walks through doors. If you're there first, do it. I don't know. So people have different understandings, excuse me, about etiquette and about chivalry and all that kind of stuff. I'm a woman with two hands. I can carry shit. I don't know. Um, yeah, Gaia says, if I have to look or act a certain way, I guess I'm staying single. <laughs> Chris, thank you. Thank you for bringing it back on tra track. I'm going to get to that just after I get um, to the rest of the comments. But thank you for bringing me back on track with what we're supposed to be talking about. Uh, Tim says, my girlfriend and I both have realized that being in our early 40s, we both like think things a certain way. So we um, adapt when we need and give space and acceptance when need be. I love that, Tim. I love that you figured it out. And that takes communication to get there. Disco Cobra says, ever consider doing a music month or something like that? Listen to an album and then discuss the album in detail. If you had that suggestion in my 20s, I would have absolutely jumped at that. I would watch a gig or two a week in my 20s. I just haven't connected to music the same way that I did ever since I left radio. Books are my jam. Um, Jimmy says, communication is key. Sometimes it can be difficult. Absolutely. Uh, Blue Reader Gal. Hello, Blue Reader Gal. Communication is a huge thing. Plus, seeing different perspectives is important too. Vaden just gifted Blue Reader Gal a, a sub. That's so sweet, Vaden. Thank you. Um, Uh, Disco Copper says, I've done both. I've bottled emotions and exploded on people. Then I've gotten emotional on a few occasions while listening to music or something. I love that. This is a thing. Feelings come out um, in so many different shapes and forms. But I think we need to remember to feel because when we start being analytical and think through the feelings to process it without actually feeling the feelings, then that can be a bit tricky as well. Uh, Scott Cleaver says, as someone who has struggled with anxiety and self-esteem issues, I'm thankful for the honesty you give friends that lets them trust that you will let them know if there's something going on. Otherwise, we can just believe it's all right. I do think that, you know, as a friend, uh, as a person with anxious friends, that is my responsibility to do. Um, and it's just to put their mind at ease so they don't snowball into worst case scenarios or explaining narratives that don't have as much evidence, but they're piecing it together because their brain feels like that that is what is going on. And it's the easiest solution. If, if I don't say anything, there is no problem. I have a really big issue with people that, are, that do the whole, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. When they're clearly not fucking fine. If you're not fine, you talk about it. If you are fine, you say you're fine. And I, mm, we have a responsibility to share our feelings. If it's like, I'm not great. I don't know how to discuss it right now. Give me a day to process my thoughts and then I'll get it to you. So it's not an emotionally driven reaction. Great. But I'm fine. You have to fucking figure it out yourself. Dumb. <sighs> uh, j Bunt Rock says, I like to open doors when the person is too far away. <laughs> then watch them do the awful, awkward shuffle run. j Bunt Rock, I have had someone do that. They walked through the door, realized I was a good 15 meters away. 15 meters is too far. You let it go. You shut the door. But no, they looked at me and they went, oh. And then I said, no. I said, you let that door drop. You do not wait. <laughs> this is too far. I will not run. <laughs> Made the fucking whole thing awkward. <laughs> but I love that you feed from that. That's great as well. Um, should etiquette be something that gets taught in school? Um, I think decency should be taught in school. Communication should be taught in school. Counseling should be taught in school. Um, Ash says, last time I went to a gig, I passed out before the main artist reached the stage. <laughs> Hands up if you've done that. No, I haven't done that. But I have gotten so drunk that I turned around and I sang every word of every song to the audience instead of watching them and letting them do their job. Mm, 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 mm. Dashboard, no, what was it? Death Cab for Cutie, 2009. What a year. Tim says, uh, how about... When we are dealing with superiors and bosses, I've worked in some seriously toxic workplaces with some disrespectful people. 
So it's hard not to say it like it is. I hear you on that. I will never work a nine to five job in an office again because of that, Tim. Because usually you're pandering to another person's ego when they don't know what the fuck they're doing. <sighs> uh, I'm not going to approve that, but Tim says, I remember the out the outgoing boss at my last job would make date rape jokes. Oh my Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Give him a smack. Uh, Kate says, I would do the I'm fine thing a lot when I was going through cancer. Oh, of course, because deal, having to deal with people's awkward pity. Yes. If I actually told them how I was doing with so much torture, people do not know how to react when the word cancer gets brought up and the pity part and sympathy. That's the difference, Kate. We're talking uh, between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is I feel sorry for you. Ugh. It's the fucking worst. It doesn't help things at all. Empathy is I'm sorry you're going through that. But again, like, I hear you on that. It's the lesser of two evils is like, everything's fine. But it's also like, I refuse to share my vulnerability with you because you are not in a position to sort of like comfort me with that. Is that fair to say, Kate? Like you pick and choose your people that get, that get to kind of, that you get to lean on for emotional support. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Kate, I'm the same as you. I would rather make people uncomfortable and exploit that torture and push it back on them than have to feel it myself. <laughs> so yeah, I make, I make jokes like that as well. And it's like, if you can't laugh about it, like you have to lighten a mood and it's how you gain control over a situation in a way. Um, you still in remission, by the way? We don't have to do a public update. You can say in the Discord, you can DM me, but I just want to get an update because I feel like I've kind of been, been through this with you for the last few years. Um, oh, clever girl makes a great conversation, a uh, great comment. Sorry. The problem with teaching etiquette in school is that it's often culture based. You're right. This is how white people should demonstrate etiquette. And it's like, that's not how other cultures would do it. No, that's a really great point. <sighs> uh, I do the, I'm fine thing, but like what Maud says, um, and will now say, give me a chance to process this. Yeah, I had to learn. The big thing for me in 2019 was learning to not um, react emotionally. I would, I'm feeling this and therefore I explode with what I'm feeling. But I've had to really learn to stop being reactionary because reaction is trying to process it, but you're doing it in a very damaging way that hurts the other person. Um Manta says, yeah, there's a fair number of people that I'm just not interested in sharing with. I can't imagine how taxing it would be in that case. Thank you, Manta. That was, an ex that was a display of empathy and not sympathy. Mm. Uh, Michelle says, I think emotional intelligence uh, and more practical psychology at different levels should be taught rather than etiquette. I feel like etiquette is the difference of you should and shouldn't, whereas emotional intelligence and, pr like you said, practical psychology is more about here are some options of what to do in a scenario. Do what fits best instead of this is right and this is wrong. Because a lot of it, it's not right and wrong. It's it's understanding, it's insight, it's empathy. Hmm. Uh, okay, we do need to go back to... Um, oh, so many great comments. So many great comments. Remission for now. Remission full stop. Remission full stop. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Kate. Etiquette is more social politeness. So it's not actually empathy or niceness. It's surface level. It's artificial. It's based on appearances. Yeah. Uh, but yes, this is a book club. <laughs> Blue Reader Girl says books. <laughs> books. Um, Chris made a comment about it and I skipped over another comment about um, Dresden. So let's go back to Chris's comment. Give me a second to do some scrolling. Can we talk about the death of the summer queen by the small folk with box cutters? That was a hell of a thing. And KP Dub says death by a thousand cuts. Summer lady, says Darian. It's a summer lady, not the queen. It was a summer lady. Um, paging book club, please. Paging book club. So this is what's really interesting. I like that we get the fey court system uh, where you have... Uh, the mother, the queen, the lady, and then the winter soldier. <laughs> That's Marvel. What the fuck is Dresden supposed to be? An angry dude and fix winter night. 
Thank you. Thank you. I'm like, Winter Soldier? <laughs> Bucky Barnes. Um, oh, the book. Hold on. What's our February book? The Reader Gown. Oh, Miss Bourne 2. Yes. Yes, it is our February book. Oh, I'm so excited for that. Mm. Um, I like when you present a very overpowered person and it, takes it's it's classism in a way tell me if i'm wrong and i want to um open up mics to anyone that's got input on this but when you have it's like a tyranny you have a tyrant who possesses all of the control and all of the power and they want to suppress the lower class so much that they don't think that they have power Mistborn, great example lord ruler scar because there is power in number even though they are the lowest down on the ladder, they are the majority. And so they actually have a lot more power if they work together, if they combine their forces. So that's essentially what the death of the Summer Lady was. It was a very powerful person taken down by the bottom rung, um, little tiny pixie fairies that a thousand cuts, literally cut her to death. Um, Michelle, do you want to elaborate on that one? Uh, sure. I, I felt I had to listen to this book like multiple times because I couldn't keep it all together because it felt so and this 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 to me. And I, I think there's like there was so much in there that was really interesting. But the Dresden Files before this book were small corners that Harry would experience and then we would experience it with Harry through that. And this just felt so grand and so expansive that I just wanted it to be a little bit more story, I guess, than having so many players and an epic battle and stuff. Does that make sense? Like it yeah. just didn't feel. There was an yeah, over it, use of exposition in a way that wasn't done throughout the storytelling. It was info dumped. Yeah. Do you like the fake court system though? Did it was it cuz I mean I, it's fantasy in a way. I did really like it. I think I would have preferred it if it was a little less epic trying to be epic and a little bit more small intrigue. Like fewer players, I think. Got I it. think that would have given Harry kind of more to do rather than okay, I have to it, it felt a little bit like a scavenger hunt. Like reading Harry go, going through a, hair, a scavenger hunt. So I was, I did, did what wasn't really interesting that way. But then like having to immerse himself like he would with the werewolves or with um, in, another investigation. I hear you on that where it's like they're not only introducing the fake court system, but it's four on either side, and then it's Elaine who's from the past who wasn't dead. Mm -hmm but is on yeah. the summer side, who's not actually working for the lady, who's helping Harry, but not helping Harry, but helping Harry. You're right. It was a little convoluted in that regard. Um, I also hate that Michael guy so much. <laughs> is that his name? Or Morgan. 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 Yes. I hate him so, so much. Morgan, again, I love using and applying the, uh, the alignment on um, characters because lawful, uh, lawful good. Lawful evil, sorry. Morgan is lawful evil. And I think that lawful evil is the fucking worst out of all the evils because they are sticklers for the rules and they exert, uh, assert authority within the confines of the law. And Morgan's a piece of shit because of that. <laughs> yes. <agreed. laughs> uh, I'm scrolling back as well through the chat just so we don't miss on anything. Uh, Kate says, back to Dresden, Harry needs to stop, <coughs> excuse me, Harry needs to stop mentioning the words slim, pretty, pretty legs, slim legs, about a woman who keeps constantly betraying him. <laughs> Kate, do you want to expand on that misogyny? The whole thing that, like... <laughs> It's the whole trope where she's a red herring because in the end, even though they're not, like, friends, she, like, betrayed him to, like, you know, win, right? 
she ended up betraying her own side. But at the same time, it's like, you don't know that, Harry, and yet you still can't stop being just, like, just so horny. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on. This is someone that he thought was dead. They had a fling when they were, what, like, 15? Thought she was dead for ages. There's, like, the end of the world impending, but he's like, mm, that ankle, though. Oh. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, you also commented saying the summer lady wanted to essentially ruin the world for balance. In war, it's the little people and the commoners and the poor and the children who always get trampled on the ones at the top. Uh, sorry, trampled on. So the ones at the top can have what they want. So it was really fitting that the small folk were the ones that took her out because they would have suffered just as much as humans with the catastrophic power shift. Great observation. Hello, Fire Scorpion. How are you? Um... Blue Reader Gal says, I'm currently reading The Obsidian Tower by Melissa Caruso. Ooh, I'd love to hear more about that. Um, ah, Cherry. Yeah, there you go. I don't remember if it was mentioned in Summer Night or in later books, but the Fey ladies need to be virgins and stay that way until they ascend to Queen. Ugh. Uh, also, Disco Cobra wants everyone to know that Tomb Raider, all three games are available on the Epic Store for free. That is a good PSA. I'm about that. Chris says, Morgan, you can hate. But Michael? Michael is neat. We like Michael. Uh, Avery, do you want to jump on board? I completely agree. Struggled with this one a lot because of the... Uh, because on top of the usual issues with the series, I found the story very meh and not put together as well as the others. Do you want to elaborate? Yeah, uh, just a lot what was said before about how a lot of it was just info dumped. We didn't get to see firsthand what was going on like we did in the other ones. Um, a lot of it was just like a lot of information we're, we were just given at the last second. Like, oh, here's all this and this is why and this this is how we're going to stop it rather than like it being gradual over time. Agree. And the story, the story itself just didn't grab me that much. So, and because I'm already not like... Super huge on the series. It was it was rough. <laughs> yeah, I hear you on that. Um, I remember reading this the first time. Oh, SES, thank you for the 17th month. It says, happy book club. Don't mind me just lurking. SES made my day yesterday, by the way. Really, really sweet. Um, I hear you on that. This did not, like, it was just kind of a little bit white noisy this particular time around for me. I remember enjoying it. Uh, I thought it was later in the series for some reason. I really liked the mothers on each side. I liked their relationship. I liked um, them testing Dresden. Um, but not only did we get a lot of exposition, a lot of info dump, but then it was like end of the world status. And you're right. That kind of storytelling needs to be drawn out. We need to be more invested. It was a bit of a Band-Aid. But then you're like, I didn't even know that I was cut to get the Band-Aid, if that makes sense. Uh, Chris says the summer lady though, uh, sorry, the summer lady thought they were in a bloody stalemate with winter. If one side wins, she thought that there would be less fighting. Uh, and that was in response, I think, to KP Dubs saying the summer lady is Thanos. If we destroy enough, what's left will be better. Hmm. Um, Thierry, have you got a, are you able to jump on to talk about your new favorite character? The gatekeeper. I'll count to 20. I drank all the wine. Hey. Hi. Uh, yeah, uh, of, yeah, of uh, Summer Night, we get introduced to a lot of the, uh, the uh, white court of, uh, of the wizards. And yeah, the gatekeeper is one of my uh, favorite new characters that we don't get much more in other books, but he has a very important role. And yeah, he's he's one of my favorite uh, uh, character when we I first read about him in this book. I still think the most interesting part of this book was in the first chapter when we um, spoke to the council and we saw everyone's role in that. And half the council like and support Dresden and the other half don't at all. And you look at the politics in that of like, if you don't play by the rules, if you challenge the system, then you can be ousted or killed in this instance too uh, uh, it's also like all the other elders seems to be respecting him more than all the other ones and we don't know why he has so much power over everybody else mm. hmm. that's true 
We don't know enough about his past yet. 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 Uh, yes. Michelle also liked the grannies. <laughs> Uh, and Colleen said the time in the shack with the two mothers showed that the balance was important and that they had an understanding of that. Agree. I like that too. Uh, Jay Bunt Rock says, Jim Butcher also pulls another James Bond with all the bad guys leaving so that Harry can escape. Although this one's a little bit more clever than the last book with Elaine tricking Aurora. Yeah, I like that. It was cool. Um, alrighty. Last overall thoughts. We rated out of our rating system. What do you give this book? What do we usually do? Out of 10? Out of 5? Out of 5? We're a good reads thing. Percentage? Out of 5. Alrighty. Kate says 2.5 out of 5. Jimmy says 4 out of 5. Chris says I really like this book. Michelle says this is a 2.5 out of 5 for me. Avery. 1.5 <laughs> out of 5. Lisa says 3.5 out of 5. Thierry says 4.25 out of 5. KP Dub says 4 out of 5. J Bunt Rock says 3 out of 5. Clever Girl says 4 out of 5. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Maybe 3 out of 5. Uh, True Scorn says 4 out of 5. Or 8 out of 10. But I moved the ratio down. Um, Darian says 4 out of 5. 4 out of 5. All right. Okay. That's, that's good. All right. What I'm going to do right now is... My <laughs> Bye. Boom. Let's talk about the best books of 2021. The best books that we read. I am going to randomly select people in the chat to talk about it. Chris, do you want to drop yours in the comments so I can read it out? Uh, we're going to start off with Colleen. <laughs> Favorites. <laughs> Colleen, what were what was the number one or the top books that you read for 2021? Uh, that's kind of a hard choice, uh, partly because I don't remember what I read in 2021 yeah. and what I read in 2020. You know, what? I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to tell on you. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I just recently finished reading, um, Jim Butcher's uh, The Aeronauts Wind Lass. And? And I really liked that book. Okay. That was a really good one. Okay. All right. There may be a time in the Dresden series where it's like, you know what, if you're into it, keep reading, go on that beautiful journey. If it ain't your thing, you know, because we have compiled on the Discord a recommendations where everyone got to recommend and then nominate and like, you know, pay respects to other people's choices. We have enough books for the next seven years. So <laughs> uh, we can well, get through this, it. This is not the same series. Um, yeah, completely this different. is a steampunk fantasy, and uh, I think he does a lot better um, balancing the different characters and um, portraying his female characters. Um, and the cats have so much personality. Cats? They talk. Yes. Like Sailor the, Moon? Um, like Luna? Yeah, they, the cats have their own society and uh their own laws of etiquette oh. and only certain people can actually understand the cats when they talk oh, but they cool. become an integral part of the mission that they're doing are you going to add that into the doc as a recommendation for us i i did yesterday i oh, love it love it thanks colleen avery you said I read Storm and Ogre books last year. If you could get it down to a couple, what are your highlights? What do you want to shout out and sell us? Um, so since I can uh, leave out my favorites that we read with book club, uh, <laughs> I will go with uh, definitely Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. Mm -hmm. That one, it's a fantasy book um, that's set in pre-Columbian America, Americas. And uses like um, the the setting and like mythologies and stuff of the uh, indigenous peoples in this area, and it Whoa. is so good. It is beautifully queer and um, just such a new take on fantasy because you know we read a lot of like European based fantasy and mm -hmm. you know so that one's great. Um, Vicious by like V.E. Schwab. Uh, Vicious by V.E. Schwab, which we've talked about before. Um, it's so good. It's uh, these two um, guys who 
did like experiments in college that basically left them with uh, powers and they're like both terrible people and they're like both like after each other. So it's just fun. Um, Kate says, I and- love Vicious. I, yep. <laughs> so we, we put in a, what do we want to read for Nerdist Book Club 2022? I put Vicious down. I actually put The Dark Shade of Magic as well down. I put I put Schwab. I love all of the Schwab stuff, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, we, and then I. If we don't do it for them, we'll do Vicious this year. I have so much chocolate in my tea. <laughs> Good. Okay. Yep. What else you got? Um, and then I'd say Gods of Jane Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. Um, it's a. Uh, mythology book but it's uh, Mayan mythology and it's about a, a girl who feels like trapped in her small town and she accidentally resurrects uh, the god of death and has to go on a cross uh, a cross country journey through 1920s Mexico to help him find his lost uh, objects <laughs> much fun and I love Sylvia Moreno Garcia's writing as well so I put I put that book down also in my recommendations for notice because <laughs> that book sounds amazing it's very um, good ash said gods of jade and shadow is fucking amazing um eolian lutist eolian lutist eolian eolian yeah from like um patrick rothbus is the eolian lutist okay miss bond was the most fun to read name of the wind was the best written will of time was the most challenging slash rewarding and the ranger's apprentice uh was the most nostalgic what a great summary Mistborn was fun to read. Agree. Name of the Wind, mwah, my favorite of all time. Wheel of Time was challenging. I wish we did a, a weekly breakdown. I agree with Kate on that one. Uh, thank you for your input for that one. Love that. Next, Darian, best book of 2021. What we got? Hmm. Um, well, I'll read it on whole so the Dresden Files, so that all blurred together. But the best book I read in 2021 was I Revisited the Martian by Andy Weir. I still haven't read it. The Martian. Yeah, I have yeah, it. Yeah, and well, it. and um, Sandman. Um, I'm going through Sandman, um, the Audible, so volumes one and two, and I'm reading the comic at the same time, and that is just fucking amazing. The audiobook. Jerry was saying, yeah. or everyone's saying in the just Yeah, the, but I, the, I went beyond that with the comics um, a few months ago, so and I'm like in volume three of the audiobook, of, of the comic that is going to be an audiobook this year. So I'm up to 50 issues out of 72. Damn, well yeah. done. It was a good year. Yeah. It was a good year for you. Uh, Colleen yeah. also wants to add, I've been reading a lot of indigenous authors. I also recommend Trail of Lightning. Thank you, Colleen. Uh, Jay Bunt Rock, best book of 2021. What do we got? Uh, for me, it'd have to be Cersei. I think that was my favorite book I read in uh, 2021. I really enjoyed that one. I loved how it played on the uh, the Odyssey and how it made it way more interesting. <laughs> Did you get Song of Achilles as a follow up? Uh, no, I haven't. I plan to read it, but I haven't got to it yet. Uh, it's on my list, and I submitted it for notice as well. Really? But I, I did want to recommend a book based on Project Hail Mary. Yeah? It was a book I read a long time ago called The Swarm by Frank Schatzing. The score? So it's the Swarm. Swarm. Like a swarm. Of, it's about uh, all of a sudden all of the creatures in the ocean start attacking her humanity. Christ, and that it's sounds kind frightening. Of, <laughs> Yeah, it's a little more horror step, but it's kind of a science mystery the way the the astrophage is in uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in Project Hail Mary. So I thought if you like that and you, you're okay with a little more horror, the Swarm by Frey Schatzing, it was a it was a German bestseller for like two years straight in like 2006, and it's really awesome. Um, I'm getting better with horror, and I kind of like uh, if it's like a horror slash something else. I'm okay with that, but I like Just that recommendation. About, they're trying to figure out what's making everything in the ocean turn against humanity. So it's a, it's very science-based like uh, Project yeah. Hail Mary is. I like that. Thanks for the rec. That was cool. Uh, Chris is in the chat saying, an absolutely remarkable thing is my recommendation for Maud. A woman in uh, a woman push in world events and celebrity and how she deals with it. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Is that in the doc, Chris? Pop it in. Pop it in. 
Uh, Avery gives an update about Mal Madeline Miller, who's the author of Circe, saying she's writing a book about Persephone, which I am very excited about. Data wizard, six months. How was work? <laughs> How was work? How was your day? I feel like you've walked in the front door and I've got dinner on the table for you saying that. Work was okay. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad you got to um, join us. Really appreciate that. We're talking... Um, Best book that you read in 2021. Everyone's sharing at the moment. Feel free to drop in your comment. <laughs> um, Kate, uh, oh wait, you're talking to someone else. I won't read out your conversation because you're having it. Uh, Ash says, 2021 reads I recommend the most are the Cradle series, The Great Coats. I read it every year because it's so enjoyable. Jake's Magical Market is such a fun read. And He Who Fights With Monsters, I mentioned earlier because it's so funny. Project Hail Mary has a lot of humor and I can't remember the last time I've laughed so hard reading a book. So humor slash like whatever, sci-fi, fuck yeah. Oh, I was going to mention this when we do Project Hail Mary next week. I'm like, what, eight chapters in and I've already recommended it for my parents. My parents are very, very big readers. Um, and I was like, I have, I'm not even halfway through and I already know I want to recommend this book to everyone I've ever met, which is really cool. Um, Chris also says the library at Mount Char is my rec for Rachel spookiness and nostalgia, the world dealing with the changes of the world unseen. Also family love these recs. We're all about the recommendations. Uh, KP dubs. Do you want to jump on or is your throat done? Cause I can read out your comment in the discord if you would like. Thierry says, stopping at chapter 15 is almost impossible. What the fuck are you talking about, almost? You finished the book! You finished the book, Thierry! Last month! <laughs> almost impossible. Like you did. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like I said, though, if anyone wants to read books, I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna get- I'm not gonna get mad about it. Like he tried. I know. <laughs> I'm not going to get mad that anyone's reading. I am, I am going to call you out publicly about it. You did stop for 22 hours. Well done. That's something. It's not nearly impossible though. Like, <laughs> you kept reading it. Jimmy says, the books I liked reading with the book clubs were Six of Crows and Circe. The books I read by myself were self-help books and the biography about Freddie Mercury. Uh, I think my favorite book that I read last year was Six of Crows. I fucking loved Six of Crows. I thought it was such a good book. I thought it was such a good... I cannot remember the last time an author has made me fall in love with six characters immediately and I would jump in front of a bullet for all of them. Loved Six of Crows. Um, we are... KP Dub says the best book that I read in 2021 was The Last Stand of the Tin Can Soldiers. It's a history book covering a little known but critical battle in the Pacific during World War II, the Battle of Samar, where a completely outgunned, outmaneuvered and outnumbered US force holds off a large Japanese armada. Hmm. So this is a thing I would only read for a book club. I wouldn't choose to do that. I don't connect with sort of like World War stories. I find it, I find war sad because it actually happened. Um, but I did read, I watched a movie the other day, um, the Guernsey Book Club and Potato Peel Pie Society. And I liked that. It was kind of like in that vein. Six of Crows was way better than Shadow and Bone, says Avery. Fuck yeah, agree. Uh, Clever Girl says Six of Crows was more of an obsession for me. Uh, Skull Cleaver says Six of Crows was likely my favorite. I have not kept up with all the book club selections. That's all right. Blue Reader Gal says The Orphan Wit by Paige Crutcher was good. Loving that. Big Rock Vandal said, did you like Six of Crows better than the Shadow of Bone trilogy? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Gaia says, I've got the Guernsey book. I loved the movie. Yeah, I thought it was really sweet. I really liked it. I saw it, yeah, the other night. It was really cute. Um, next, we got Lisa. Best book of 2021. And you read over 200. <laughs> Yeah, it makes it kind of hard to choose. Yeah. So. Um, I don't. I read a lot. A lot of my favorites of the year are actually rereads, like Mistborn and Six of Crows. Um, I really liked. Um, really quickly, though, Addie if Lurie. you're reading 200 books a year, and then we nominate a book, <laughs> chances are you've read it. 
like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well a lot of the books that I'm nominating to read are ones that I've read and loved and want to hear other people's perspectives yeah. so yeah which that's why I was pushing Brandon Sanderson so much because I, I love the discussions that we've gotten out of it um but yeah so I think and and I did a lot a lot of my reading last year I was working on trying to finish series that I was in the middle of nice. so a lot a lot of the books that I read were you know like fourth fifth books of series yeah so but yeah I, I read a lot a lot of the uh, good ones but I think Brandon Sanderson's probably my top for yeah, the year with Rhythm of War and um Elantris and Mistborn so I know Elantris is on the list as well I think that could be really really cool uh, thank you, love. Progression, uh, Ash, Ash says, Progression Fantasy and Lit RPG are the two genres that I've fully immersed into for comfort reads over the last six months. They're the only genres that I've managed to speed through 600 plus page books in the last year or two. Ash, welcome to our book club. you got to get in on this. It's a good time. Hello, Jason. Jason says, I enjoyed rereading Wolf and Iron by Gordon R. Dixon. Tell me a little bit about that in the chat. Uh, Jay Buntrock, the Hunger Games prequel was an interesting read, having to empath empathize with Snow, knowing the monster he becomes. It's kind of like watching Cruella. I, for some reason, I read all the Susanna Collin books, um, what, in 2010, I, I think, 11 years ago. I just had no interest to go back for some reason. Uh, Blue Reader Gal says, anyone uh, likes vampires. It's not romance or sparkly vampires, but... Empire of the Vampires by Jay Kristoff is good. So much action and it's dark. I am about to get started on Evernight, but I'm wondering if we should do it with Geek Bomb Book Club because when I went through our list that we have, um, if, if you're in the chat and you're not knowing what I'm talking about with the Discord and you're not aware of what I'm talking about with the um, recommendations spreadsheet that we have, um, I, I probably should do my due diligence. We have a Patreon perk. It's only $5 a month. But with that, you get access to the chat that happens throughout our book club where you're a part of the actual kind of like discussions of Geek Bomb's book club. And then you also get access to a never heard again exclusive after show that we do for Nerdist's book club um, where we do a Q&A through that as well. So if you are into books and you want a community and you want accountability and you want to read awesome sci-fi fantasy books, um, yeah, patreon.com slash geekbomb. I think I can put it in here. I think it's the best five bucks you can spend a month. I fucking love our community. I think it's the best thing ever. We're doing good reads now. I'm going to start making like book talk content on TikTok to try and expand our group as well. But there you go. Nevernight is good too. Yeah, I think we could do Nevernight. I think that could be fun. Uh, Adam. I've been reading mostly rude technical support emails. I love that you try to participate as a non-reader in book club, but that's sweet. You're here and that's what matters. 14 months though, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Thank you. We've been friends for over a year now. What? What? Uh, Lisa Emberant Elias says also, Am Amoralman by Derek Del Gaudio. That was an interesting read. Tell me more about that book as well. Hi, beat him. Um, thanks, Lise. Michelle, best book of 2021. What you got? Um, well, like I said in the chat, I didn't read much outside of book club, but I loved Addie LaRue. I think that was my favorite. Um, Rachel's trying to get us to do it for Nerdist. And I was like, sweetie. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can do it again for Nerdist. We did it. Nerdist. Yeah. <laughs> we I think it'd go. We went deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but I uh, got back into BBC audio plays. So for anyone who's not sure about the audio format, I can highly recommend those. What's been a good audio play? Because I know that I grew up listening to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy audio play. I love the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit ones. And then there's some good of the classic British murder mystery ones. So like the Miss Marple ones. Yes. And then there's this new one. P.D. James has a collection and that one's really good too. So yeah, I, there's and then the, all the ones that Neil Gaiman does. 
Mm-hmm. They're hands down awesome. Uh, never, uh, never wear. Is that what it's called? That one's my favorite. Okay. I love that. I was going to say J. Burnt Rock, we're in exactly the same headspace with that. Hercule Poirot. Um, I remember my parents used to watch Hercule Poirot and mum's like, I think you'd really like this. And I was like, I can't get over his mustache. We did a, we did a Hercule Poirot for book club, alpha book club, uh, the Orient Express. That was a Hercule Poirot because they turned it into a movie with um, Professor. Help me. Chat. What's his damn. Kenneth Branner. Kenneth Branner. What's his name? Professor what? In Harry Potter? What professor is he? Lockhart. Lockhart. Thank you, Michelle. Kate, best book of 2021. was difficult i read a lot of really good books this year and i wanted to narrow it down to a book that came out this year uh i'm gonna go with a book called the last house on needless street Mm. the catriona ward so it's a horror story of it's multiple perspectives one of the perspectives is a talking cat that uh (laughs) it's a man a deeply mentally ill man lives in this house and a girl who lost her sister moves in next door. She thinks that he's the killer of her sister who disappeared. And you think it would start off as like this, you know, typical kind of horror maniac kind of story, but it really spins your conceptions about people with severe mental illness on their head and what you're willing to believe about someone just because they act a certain way. So like, I will still think about this book five years from now. Only because I watch it every Christmas, but it's a little bit Home Alone like, where it's like that rumor was spread about the neighbor, who sh- the old man who shovels the snow, and they're like painted him as being dangerous and a murderer, and then he like talks. Yeah, to and him. it's it's also it's a really heavy book because it deals with the fallout of severe trauma and how mental illness arises from that. So it, it was mm. just a very like. Just an excellent, excellent, harrowing read. Mm. What was it called again? The Last House on Needless Street. Needless Street. Thank you for that one. Uh, hey, Lisa, are you in the chat? I know that you're in your you're commenting in the chat, but if you want to jump in the thank you, Kai Reddle, Kai Reddle, Kai. Thank you for the follow. Um, I'll hear you. Long time viewer, first time chatter. Kai Reddle. Uh, can you help me with that name? I just, I want to get it right. I read the first three Shannara books again. Uh, if Aaron was here, he couldn't make it because he's working tonight. Aaron is the biggest um, Shannara fan and wants us to read it for book club. So you are not alone. You are in very, very good company. Aaron is game wizard if you're ever back in the chat. Um, but Ember and Aaliyah, you are in the book club. If you do want to jump into the discord, you're more than welcome to. Um, but she says there was a special release on Netflix called in and of itself, which was a filmed stage show that I saw in New York city a few years ago. Uh, that's cool. And then Amor, um, um, oh, a moral man, a moral man. I'm like, I'm a moral man. <laughs> God damn it. I will read the word as I see it. A Moral Man um, was by that guy. The book is somewhat mostly autobiographical. Got it, got it, got it. Was Tanara the short-lived MTV show, or am I thinking of something else? Jay Buntrock, you are 100% right. It was starring the guy who used to date Vanessa Hudgens, Austin. Uh, it was not good. MTV ruined it. I was very, very shocked that MTV took on a high fantasy show like that. I will say that my friend, uh, he played a prince in it. He's Australian. The thing with MTV, they're like, it's fantasy, but let's make sure that every single person is outrageously good looking. (laughs) They were all turbo babes. And you're like, I get the the, the end of the world and da-da-da-da and this druid has come in, but you're all so good looking that I can't believe any of it. It's, it does sound like the CW. I think uh, SES said that, and I think that that's what um, MTV was trying to do, trying to get on that. Let's make them really good looking, and now we love fantasy. 
Maybe it was like a Game of Thrones take. If Game of Thrones and CW had a kid. Um, but thank you for the uh, recommendations for that one, Kate. Ash says, I'd also recommend Cybernetic Tea Shop because it's such an amazing slice of life book. Love that. Um, and then Jimmy, best book of 2021. Oh, hello. Yeah. Um, I can't say that uh, I could think of a specific book that came out in 2021 that I It didn't liked, need to come out I... in 2021. It's just a book that you read last year. Okay. Well, I, as I said in the, the comments before, you know, Six of Crows with the group and Cersei were my cho choosing ones. Now, I like those. Cersei sounds like something that you, would, you wouldn't have selected yourself to read. Well, the reason being that I like the book so much is my mom was big into... Uh, Greek, uh, Greek mythology. mythology. So, and and one of the jokes that I used to tell my mother all the time was, "What is Medusa's favorite cheese?" And that's gorgonzola. <laughs> and, and so that's brilliant. Uh, th that whole th what? What's that? That's brilliant. I'm gonna use that. I fucking love cheese jokes. That's great. Oh, well, that uh, I am a comedian. I don't need. <laughs> I don't need to remind you. Uh, that's not the point. The point is is that it reminded me of my mother and anything that reminds me of my mother, I immediately enjoy. It's just Aww. how it is, you know, like Did you astrology, recommend the book to anything her? like that. What's that? Did you recommend the book to her? Oh, oh my mother passed away, Maud. She cool. passed away in, in 2014. That would be me putting my foot in my mouth. So please excuse me for doing that. It's it's no worries. It's I don't know if I've ever told you that pr prior to this, but now now you know you know. <laughs> now I know. But you do talk about your dad but, more, so that makes sense. Um, well, I, I see my dad every day. My you know my dad had recently got diagnosed with dementia, so I can't leave him alone. That's not the point. Point okay. is, is the books. So the books are, Cersei and Six of Crows that I like in the book club, outside of the book club that I read myself where self-help books, mm. you know, like um, like uh, Felicia Day's Embrace Your Weird. Oh, it's very man. good. You know, it, it breaks down, you know, in chapters. It gives you little tasks to do. Oh, that's you know, cool. it's very nice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and another one is uh, Happy Brain, Happy Life by Maureen Cronin, uh -huh. where she basically explains her life and all the stuff that she had to go through, you know, and, and how she... Uh, remained positive and it's, it's 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 supposed to say that you have these bad experiences you need to move past them because mm -hmm, they don't mm -hmm. define you yes you know stuff like that. that and and then lastly uh yeah it's the book uh queen um yes don't you know uh, freddie mercury okay. history um two of my two of my favorite bands in my whole entire life is the cranberries and queen Good because sense. Because, you know, like you said, it's good taste. The words are lost. You know, like I remember Randy Jackson asked me why I liked a certain band. And I was like, have you heard the band? Have, yeah. Do you listen to the lyrics? Do you have ears? Anyway, sorry, yeah. That's cool. And like, um, going back to sort of like reading materials that sort of remind you of your mom. It's almost like having like a hug. It's like, you know. Having that item exactly. of clothing that still smells like them, that just kind of has that familiarity. I get that completely. And I just, I think that's beautiful. I think that's beautiful. Agreed. Uh, Thierry, before we go to you, I'm giving you a 20 second head start. Uh, Homer is in the chat. First time listener uh, of our book club. And so this is the first book club stream that I watched. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, KP Dubs gifted us up to Homer. That's how we welcome people around here. I love that. Homer says, this is the first book club stream I watch. I'm really enjoying it. I think the best book I read last year was the end uh, was End of Watch, the third of the Bill Hodges trilogy by Stephen King. Uh, Homer, is that a horror? Because I know Stephen King doesn't exclusively write horror, but majority, I guess, what he's known for. End of Watch was also a movie with Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena, which, oh, I watched it on a plane. I wept my freaking eyes out. Ugh. But I guess it's different. Uh, 
J Bunt Rock says Bones and All by Camille DeAngelis is going to be a Timothy Chalamet. Uh, Chalamet. <laughs> I get his name wrong all the time. I say Chalamet and it's Chalamet. Uh, screaming fetus. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. <laughs> Why? I have to say it out loud. Um, Metal Geek says best book. Does the full Death Note collection count? If so, that. I mean, it is 2,000 pages long. Absolutely, it's that. Thank you for the suggestion and participation. Um, Thierry, you got your best book of 2021? Yep. Uh, so, yeah, it would be Thirsty and the Invisible Life of Adil Aru, uh, technically Project Hail Mary. And if I would have one more, would be uh, DC's Black Label Harleen. Is it a comic? Yeah. It's uh, the story of uh, Harley Quinn. Uh, she's becoming like uh, Dr. Uh, Harleen Quinzel. Quinzel. No, becoming Harley Quinn. Yeah, I think by, it's fascinating. Uh, Stephen it's so good. I mean, I know that like it's kind of been glorified in pop culture, but I truly do think that a woman so brilliant that understands her psyche so well um, gets manipulated by some like an absolute manipulative genius in a way. Though. Exactly. It's very interesting. It's just too bad that the author cut ties with DC because he was preparing to do a uh, Poison Ivy book of the same oh, right. genre. Okay. Um, really quickly, because if I see it, I call it out. Russell Gant, you just followed... You said you got a partner and then you made a fucking negative comment about my appearance saying I have a long nose like a scarecrow. Now, Gaia has deleted your comments, but I'm going to say fuck you. Because I was earlier talking about how I, as a woman online, I'm subjected daily to negative feedback about my appearance and getting critiqued in a way that is brutal. So thank you for demonstrating almost live what that looks like. You cunt. <laughs> anyway, uh, Kai Reddle says the Dark Tower graphic novels are great for in-between book reads. Uh, we did the Dark Tower back in 2016 and it was a bit of a slog, actually. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway... Colleen says, I've got an action figure of Elle. It was supposed to be for my granddaughter, but I never got around to giving it. Uh, so it's displayed on my shelf. I like that. Um, thank you, by the way, Gaia. You crushed, you crushed that. That's so fucking funny. Um, end of watch is an example of a good David A. Um, movie. Yes, agree. Uh, last but not least, Vaden. <laughs> thank you, Kate. Right, I'm back, I'm back. There you go. Sorry, hi. All right. So we were discussing a uh, favorite book, right? Best book of 2021. All right. For me, it's got a Mistborn. I'm like, I read like four books this year, so last year it wasn't particularly... Uh, four is better than year. none. Yeah. I mean, I got to start somewhere again. Yeah. I stopped reading books for the long while, so we got back into it again. I'm enjoying it, though. Mistborn? So for me, it's uh, Mistborn. Yeah, it's Mistborn. I, I love the elements. The, the match system in general is great. I love the use of metals. That's always fun. Like any time you use metals or earth elements stuff, it's my favorite. When they build uh, out um, uh, sort of magic mechanics that make sense, it's my favorite. That's why I love Name of the Wind as well. It's like applying this sort of like t altered science in fantasy. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that's always great. I never I haven't read the name of the one yet, but I heard, I watched the video you guys did, the book club of that, and, and now I want to read that too. So, Lisa, um, I'll pop it over to you to talk about schedule, what the next few months for Geek Bomb looks like. we got Project Hail Mary for this month. So next Wednesday and the Wednesday after, we'll be covering Project Hail Mary. Um, but let's talk about the sort of the upcoming books so that people has, have enough preparation to kind of mentally plan and purchase, if need be, the books that we got. Uh, coming up in February, we'll be doing the second book of Mistborn, which is The Well of Ascension. Um, 
and then hang on. <laughs> I think after that we were did we want to skip doing another um Dresden book or do we want to continue what we've been doing back and forth? I want to put a pin in it for a little bit. Just, just okay. Then we We'll just need to pick out a book that we want to put in between that and the final Mistborn. Um, but so, yeah, so it'll be Mistborn and then whatever we choose for next and then the third Mistborn will be in um, April. Is Nevernight a standalone book or is it a series? Nevernight is a trilogy. It's a trilogy. So, so I that, mind doing yeah, that would be starting. In, Red yeah. Rising is a part of a um, trilogy. Trilogy. I can go through. I know we have quite a few on our list. That um, awesome. So I can go through and maybe do a poll for us in the Discord. Um, and um, the great thing about the spreadsheet that we have, not only does everyone get to recommend the books of their choice, but then if there's a recommendation that you like, you get to sort of like uh, add your name to that suggestion. And so I really want to prioritize the books that have like four um additional kind of like recommendations based on on that one as well hi bingo bobcat is it evernight not nevernight it's evernight evernight kai Riddle, well question. never are you talking about the jay Kristoff books yes yeah that's never and evernight's a vampire trilogy which i may have read in 2009 right Um, J Bunt Rock, if you go into the pinned messages, which is in the icon up the top of the reading section, uh, you will, there's a lot of scrolling. We can probably just add it in again for you. Um, yeah, we'll just, we'll open it up and add it in again for you so that you can get your recommendations in. It's a very, very thorough list. It's really, really cool. And I've actually gone through and I've, um, added in a I've kind of like highlighted all the books that we've already covered whether it's been Nerdist Book Club or Geek Bum Book Club as well Evernight is a vampire romance series it is okay cool hey Nomad the Kid how are you the highlighted ones are the ones that we've done yes uh, the second book to Black Sun comes out in April so we should read the first one to prepare for Fevered Star wink I like that Avery uh, is Jay Kristoff an Australian author shut the front door out of vision. Yes, really he is. And I actually. Adam is really cool. Adam! <laughs> Good on you, bud. <laughs> Sorry. What were you saying, Lise? Um, yeah, I was just saying he is an Australian author. And um, I put in the chat earlier, um, I follow this girl on YouTube who um, actually did a couple episodes of like a TV show version that she got a grant to do from YouTube. Um, that she's also an Australian. Um, so that be, might be a fun thing to do. We could read the series and then watch her little um, adaptation of it. So I would also, I mean, what I was trying to do for Nerdist is if we covered the book for that month, I would actually contact the author to see if our after show could be a Q&A with the author. Um, I wonder if we can start doing that for Geek Bomb books as well. Because um, I would love to talk to Jay Kristoff. He lives in Perth. Now that I'm looking it all up, I heard his name so many times. I just didn't, I mean, it's that, I, I just assumed that he was American. This is the default usually. That's really cool though. That could be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> she Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan is a standalone book and the author is also Australian. Oh, cool. I like that. Okay, this is really exciting. 2022 is looking to be really, really awesome. Uh, again, if you're in Patreon and you've uh, signed up to the $5 tier, you get access to hashtag reading, the reading channel in Geek Bomb's Discord. It is locked to anyone that is not a backer. Uh, we talk about books 24-7 on that channel. We check in with each other. We post spoilers that have been covered up. But it's a very, very interactive and great community to chat books. We cover a book a month for Geek Bomb, but we do two of these Twitch streams about it, the first and second Wednesday of the month. Uh, and then the final Wednesday of the month, it's for Nerdist Book Club, where it's a one hour stream on Nerdist's YouTube and Facebook page and Geek and Sundry's Twitch page. And then we do an after show that is exclusive to that Discord channel that you can only access if you are a paid backer as well. It is a really, really good time. 
Um, and it just means that we get to talk about the books for like another 40 minutes, which is really cool as well. So if you're big into books, that's a great place to be. Um, the next book we're doing is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. We are doing the first 15 chapters next Wednesday. If you're not into reading and you need an excuse, this book is brilliant. I have not met one person in the community that hasn't enjoyed it yet. It is very, very funny and it's sci-fi and it's really great to listen to and it's a very easy, fun read. So, <laughs> Cherry, oops, yeah, because he finished it. Uh, so jump on board for that one for next week, but we're going to hit January strong with a really, really good book. So spread the word. If you know someone that's looking to read more books, get them involved as well. Because we're doing this on Twitch, even if you're not a part of the Patreon community, you can still join us um, by watching and commenting as well. And we have a Geek Bomb book club, Goodreads. I'm going to pop it in the chat right now. Sign up there. We're doing discussions and conversations over there. We currently have 50 members. I'd love to get that to 250 members by the end of the year. I think we can do it. Uh, Clever Girl says, Project Hail Mary, time for science. We are going to be able to talk about this one a lot. It's so, 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 so good. Uh, thank you to all my uh, backers who are in the call right now. So good to be back. Thank you for chatting books. Really appreciate every single one of you. I'll see you in the reading channel. Um, yeah, Project Hail Mary is so good. It's so good. Um, so definitely get involved and read that one. Um, I know we had good viewers. People like books, Chris, who'd have thunk? I feel like I'm single-handedly trying to charge, uh, you know, charge the book club geek space. Um, but at the same time, geek bum's so big and I just kind of focus on books cause it's my favorite. Hi, Morphidius. So lovely to see you. Uh, for everyone else. Hello, Euphoria Lee. Thank you so much for the follow. Um, Thierry is challenging everyone. That if you're going to read Project Hail Mary, just try and stop at chapter 15. Just try it. See if you can do it. He failed. Maybe you can do it. Uh, Euphoria Lee says, hi, I just found you on the browse page. Cool. That means I want to keep streaming so that we can keep expanding our book club. But it is only a two hour stream and we hit that 11 minutes ago. And I've got... Um, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 people in the chat who's two hours and I'm stealing from them on their Wednesday evening. Chris, you finished Hail Mary as well? Okay, confession. Who else did not stop? Who's read more than 15 chapters? Show yourself. Avery says, I've succeeded so far, but only because I had uh, a hold coming from the library. We'll see if we make it to next week. Lisa hasn't even started yet. Euphoria says, was very excited to see your stream because I love reading. I'm keen on this. Um, while we do, I mean, we we start at 5 uh, o'clock p.m. PT. Morphinius, the book is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. It was nominated as the number one book on Audible for 2021. It is fan-fucking-tastic. Skull Cleaver says, I have to get the book. I'm going to try and power through to 15. You got this. Colleen says, I'm on chapter 10. I'm hoping that I can exercise self-control. Manta said, I finished it when it came out. <laughs> Blue Reader Gal says, next book is Project Hail Mary. It absolutely is. And we'll be doing that this time next week, 5 till 7 p.m. PT. Um, we kicked off finishing December's book, which was book four of the Dresden Files called Summer Night. But we also spoke about the best book that we read in 2021. It didn't have to come out in 2021. It was just the best book that you read. So if you are just joining us, drop in the chat the best book that you read in 2021. I'll read that out. If you want more information, hello, Ashaw. Thank you so much for the follow. Um, if anyone else is looking to find a place for the details, join our Discord. Uh, thank you, Takamesa. What's going on? How come, is it, am I on some sort of browse page somewhere? Hmm. Bingo Bobcat says, I don't read much, but I'll give it a read. Bingo Bobcat, I can almost guarantee, I will literally Venmo you 10 bucks if you don't like this book. But you gotta be honest with me. 
Uh, Blue Reader Girl says, I need to get book three for Mistborn to read too. Uh, in February, we'll be doing book two of the Mistborn trilogy. We did book one last November. Really good. Really, really good. Oh, Euphorily says that, that was I, I enjoyed the Mistborn series in 2021. We covered it last year. So you have to join us for book two since you already read it. Yes, and then read book three with us. Fantastic. Uh, B Rock Vandal says, the problem is now I have to read the rest of Andy Weir's stuff. Yeah, I know. We might have to get through that. I love it so much. Morphinius says the Mistborn series was great. Uh, GNU user, hello there, says Project Hail Mary was probably one of the only handful of books that I finished in 2021. Ash Shaw says, I loved the Poppy War trilogy. Uh, I know for a fact that Lisa keeps pushing the Poppy War trilogy on. I added that to my Nerdist recommendations for the year. Here we go. Yeah, Tam, uh, Taco Misa says, uh, you popped up in my list of recommended channels. I reread Goat Song, one of my favorite memoirs. It's about two writers who leave their city lives to buy a goat dairy and learn all about running a goat dairy. It made me cry over a goat. Oh, that's really cute. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Lisa, I do want to do the Poppy War. I think that that could be a lot of fun as well. Uh, Skull Cleaver says, our stream is in the number one position on the Just Chatting page. This is the thing about streaming. If I set a two-hour stream, by hour two, they're like, all right, now we'll push you. And I'm like, I'm wrapping up. <laughs> Why do you do this to me? I mean, I'll keep talking about books if anyone else wants to chat, but I also want to be super cognizant that I have 13 people literally like, on standby that I if you need to go I do not want to take anyone else's time but I kind of love that we got 77 views talking about books yay that's a lot of fun KP Dubs gift in the subs uh, Eddie Cosmo Mad Masquerade and Baddest Page just got gifted a sub make sure you thank KP Dubs because it's very very generous like that uh, Michelle said, can those of us who can stay on the chat work through what we want to read for February? Yeah. Michelle, what do you want to read for Feb? I think we're doing Mistborn book two for February. It's March. March. I meant March. Yes. Whatever one we didn't decide on. I'm game for anything. Um, I, I, I liked uh, Kate's suggestion. That sounded really interesting. Yeah. Um, the one based on ch like Chinese history. I think that would be really good, but yeah. I am game for anything. I know our list is oodles long and a lot of my to be reds are on that <laughs> list. Yeah. Um, let me open up our document actually and see, I, I wouldn't mind doing like a coherent series. I think trilogy is good. I think we get a little bit caught up and this is the Dresden thing where I think they're really easy to listen to. I love listening to the series. But then asking someone to commit to like a 16 book series is a, a bit of an ask. Um, but trilogies, I think, are great because we'll do book one and then we'll do a standalone and then book two and then a standalone and then book three. 17 books, Terry. Yeah. Yeah. So in our document, um, someone's in there already, which is great. I'm going to, did we post it back in the, the Discord? J Bunt Rock, that's for you. This is the spreadsheet. Come on by, put in your X. Um, I will break this down for you if you are not familiar and you can't access it because it is a Patreon privilege. But basically we have a column that's your name. So you get to add your books, the book title or the series, the author, a brief synopsis, the genre of the book or series, whether it is a book or series and how many are in it, the length of the book. So is it like a short, easy read? Is it medium or is it a chunky boy? And then my favorite column is seconded. So if there's a suggestion that you are like, absolutely, I was going to suggest it, you get to add your name to that suggestion. So for example, the very first book on the list, my favorite book of all time, The Name of the Wind and The King Killer Chronicle. There's only two of them though. So it's like, I want to do a trilogy. Third book hasn't come out yet. We've been waiting 10 or 11 years. Um, but I put on there, so King Killer Chronicles, author is Patrick Rothfuss, synopsis, the origin story of Quoth, a brilliant hero with a revealing backstory. The genre is fantasy. Is it a series? I said, yes, there's two out of three of them. The length, they're chunky. 
That's a big book. Look at that bad boy. And then seconded, and it was seconded by Adam, Lisa, Chris, Darian, Avery, and uh, Amber and Aaliyah. <laughs> of course, Aaliyah. Uh, JMarty81, thanks so much for the follow. Welcome. We're chatting books over here. Uh, and then I've highlighted only yesterday the books that we've already covered, like Mistborn Trilogy. We've started that. Throne of Glass, we did it for Nerdist last year. Dresden Files, we've done four books for that already. Cersei, we did it for Nerdist last year. Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V. Schwab, we did that for Geek Bomb last year. Beautiful book. Cemetery Boys, we did that for Nerdist last year. Wheel of Time, we've done it for both Geek Bomb in 2019 and Nerdist last month. Uh, and Sandman, we're doing that for Nerdist this month. The Dark Tower, we did it back in 2016 or 17, I think it was 2017 for Alpha Book Club, the original iteration of what we're doing, as well as American Gods. Um, and we also did his Dark Materials, but we only read The Golden Compass out of the trilogy. So I think we want to do The Subtle Knife next out of that one for Nerdist Book Club this year. Um, oh, do we do... Okay, I really want to do Lies of Locke Lamora. We're doing that in 2022 no matter what, all right? That is happening. I want to have a really good um, breather, palate cleanser. So if we're doing Mistborn, that's steampunk fantasy. So the fact, like uh, the best book, something like Project Hail Mary, which is funny sci-fi. Just to kind of balance it out a little bit. So standalone books, there are quite quite a few standalone books here we could find a medium or a chonky standalone book there's a lot of fantasy there's horror in here there's thriller um should we i kind of want to hear from anyone else what would an ideal march book be if you've got one in mind jump on in say something that's like not Western fantasy, not white, if we're going to do, you know, because we've been doing a lot of, like, Dresden, Lock Lamora, um, King Color, Mistborn, all of those. Black Sun. She Who Became the Sun. Uh, Colleen said Black Sun, which is what I think Avery was championing as well. Guy said Standalone would be good. Um, Black Sun is part of a series, though, so if we're wanting to do standalone, I think they said She Who Became the Sun is a standalone. She Who Became the Sun. Who recommended that one? Who can tell me about it? What's so it's a uh, standalone book about, um, it's like a Mulan-style retelling of the first Chinese emperor. Right. Are you able to add that into your selections? Yeah, I just looked it up on Goodreads and it's showing it's part of a series now. So I don't Is know. It? Yeah. <sighs> There's quite a few. I mean, Kate, your suggestions alone. So many of these are standalone. Um, head full of ghosts. Oh, that's a dude as well, though. One last stop. Um, oh, I really want to do Cruel Prince as well. I bought the first one for that. Um, that was really good. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's a standalone, like, romance with light sci-fi fantasy elements. It says Yes Trilogy. It's, like, got time. Prince. It's, oh, Cruel Princes, that's fairies. Oh, that's why I want to read so, it. One Last Stop oh, is, last like, stop. a romance story, but it's, like, time-traveling. Oh, girl meets girl on subway who turns about who turns out to be stuck in time. I like the sound of that. Adding my name to it, Lisa. Nod. That could be good. Contemporary. She who became the sun. I see you adding it now. Um, a lot of fantasy from Lisa. <laughs> Ooh. Sci-Fi Standalone, Android's Dream by John Scalzi. Mm -hmm. Standalone Sci-Fi, Artemis. We could do Artemis. We could do The Martian. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, Gamer Night 45. How are you? We're trying to lock in the next three books for Geek Bomb Book Chat so that everyone kind of knows what we're going to be tackling leading in. If we're doing Mistborn, we could do some Andy Weir. One last stop is so good, says Avery. Midnight Bargain by C.L. Polk is a Polk is a standalone, but it's really different, says Blue Reader Girl. Hmm. Luckiest Girls Alive by Jessica Knoll. Jimmy, tell me about that one. Hello. Yeah, I'm sorry I had to mute it. <laughs> That's right. Um, but yeah, it's basically um, a story about this lady who gives uh, certain perspectives about her life. You know, I guess uh, maybe from her point of view. No, I haven't read it. It just looked interesting. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, I saw it and I was like, hey, this looks like a good book. And that's why I was like, how about this book? <laughs> that's literally the gist of it. Okay. But I, if, you know what? I you're... think that suggesting books that you've bought or you're interested in, that's really important to get in. Guy says, I own The Martian already, so I'm interested. I'm actually going with what Avery said. Sylvia mm -hmm. Moreno Garcia's stuff is all standalone. Her stuff's more like 1920s to 1940s. But... Female author, Mexican. Yeah, it was really good. I think that that could be a really good March book. That's her newest one. It's like I'm a noir you, so. alt thriller. And then I think maybe we could do uh, Martian or Artemis. I know that Thierry has been pushing Artemis from the get-go and said that Rosario Dawson narrates the audio book. So that's a win as well. So, Lise, what are you thinking? Maybe we do... So January's Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. February is book two of Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. March could be um, Sylvia Moreno Garcia's latest book, which is a standalone, which means that April is Mistborn book three, which means that May is Martian May. How are we feeling Sounds about like that? Sounds like a good plan. Okay. Avery's in. Adam, we should read Street Fighter, the movie no novelization. Uh huh. That's a great, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Shouldn't maybe Star Wars? Oh, we're due for a Star Wars. Well, you know what? I might petition that for Nerdist. I think we'll do Star Wars for Nerdist. Um, I, I want to. I put forward um, Claudia Gray's High Republic book. Uh, Scalzi also wrote Lock In, which is good book a good book mm. uh sprinkles i am telling you hector navarro is pushing for a star trek book so hard so he's going to be championing that for you martian may okay all righty well it's penciled in but it's sounding pretty good all righty uh euphoria says um what a perfect lineup i'm feeling good about this i like that i like it. it's a it's a good Good mix. Well, how's that? I had to push the 2nd December book chat because I had COVID. Uh, and now I've dropped a two and a half hour chat, my first one back for January. I'm super excited about 2022. Uh, the last question that I have for everyone, I know I should let everyone go, but I fucking love books. We are on Goodreads now. Goodreads, uh, Mufinia says, how are you feeling now? I'm feeling a lot better, actually. Took me a bit, but I feel good. The last question that I have, especially if you're on Goodreads, and if you are on Goodreads, please join our book club right here. Goodreads gets you to uh, do a reading challenge where you say how many books you want to read for the year. Now, I'm at 52, which is a book a week. Kate, Miss Necromancer, is at 52, which is a book a week. Lisa has 200. And Lisa did 200 because she did more than 200 last year. But I want to ask everyone else, if you have a goal of books that you want to read, how many? I know, Gory, I know. Um, how many books does everyone want to read? Avery, you said 45 books. How many did you do last year? How are you feeling about 45? Oh, my God, Adam. Adam, um, 
Adam posted the Street Fighter in the Discord. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Good suggestion. Sorry, Avery. So good. Um, my uh, goal for 2021 was 30, mm -hmm. and I ended up reading 44. So I did 45, but I'm kind of hoping maybe I might go past that and reach 50 so I can start doing 50 in the future. Because I've kind of, I did 17 in 2020, so I'm like slowly working my way back up to where I was pre that. So I have yeah. no shame in that at all. I, I, I was kind of this before audiobooks, I was the same. I was reading 15 books, if that, a year, like not even. Um, it's, it can be quite time taxing um so i don't want to feel like anyone's being shamed there's no wrong or right answer if it's two amazing because two is more than zero so we've got some first time chatters actually old snake 167 says this is my first time really watching and listening to this but i'm really enjoying this thank you thank you uh, first time chatter from mr fine says 50 so you're trying to do a book a week too that's good Oh, wow, I really am number one for just chatting. Cool. Um, clever girl, you read 74 last year. You're hoping for 60 this year. Why do you think you couldn't do much pleasure reading for a long time? Colleen, 74 last year is great. Uh, when I was teaching, it was extremely time-consuming. So most of what I read was either for school, for classes. Um, I, I occasionally get a chance to read for pleasure, but um, I was really proud of myself this year. So 74. I'm gonna say 60 and try for more. Okay. Uh, some of those were graphic novels, but I think everything counts. I do too. I do too, yep. If you can add it on a Goodreads, it exists, I say. Uh, Mr. Feeney is a reference for Boy Meets World. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, do books of matches count? <laughs> That's clever. No, absolutely not. Um, Rob says, I used to read every book recommended on Powered. Whitney's recommendation was a top 10 book for me. I love hearing that. Yeah, Powered, uh, the reason why I like doing playing, watching, reading, uh, doing, but the acronym POWER, P-W-R, I love asking people what you're currently playing, watching, and reading because it acts as a recommendations data bank. If we're all kind of like-minded, we all like fantasy or uh, geeky content, um, I think the way we learn is by asking and hearing recommendations from people that we have uh, things in interest and in common with. Yeah. Pat, like Patrick Swayze says, so do most people buy the actual books or audiobooks or Kindle or e-reader? Uh, if we've got a mod, let's do a poll. Books, audiobooks, Kindle slash e-reader. What does, how do people consume books? Some of each, says uh, Colleen. Rob says, I use Powered as an icebreaker at a party with a cute girl. Hey, I love hearing that. Gore, uh, we have a Power recommendation channel in the Discord. And Gory says, I literally go to the channel for dis uh, in the Discord for recommendations. Hmm. Uh, Euphorily says, books usually. I like holding a thunker book. <laughs> Morphinia says, lately ebooks, but I've got plenty of physical ones as well. Avery says, a combo of all of them, depending on what's available or affordable or what mood I'm in. Um, Fat Black Patrick Swayze says, I buy used as much as possible. So it's usually real books for me. But ebooks are so much cheaper than the full price new ones. Old Snake says, I just started listening to Will Smith's audiobook, and wow, it's pretty heavy. He really pulls the curtain on himself. Oh, that's cool. This is the thing, autobiographies. We needed, a... thanks to Jimmy, you know, opening our eyes on different genres. Uh, Terry says, I've been audible since doing book club, but if the narrator is boring, physical. The good thing about audiobook is that you can listen to a sample before, so you can make up your mind with that. Disco Copper says, what kind of sections do you have in the Discord? Do you have a music section uh, or anything based around movies and TV? That would be something I'm interested in. Do we have? We have. These are the channels. Welcome. Announcements. Pronouns. General. Geeking out. Memes. YouTube, where you link a video that you liked. Listening, where you talk about music that you're listening to. 
In fact, what are people, first time listening, uh, what are people talking about in here? Some of them are audiobooks. Some of them are how you pronounce <laughs> words. Um, oh, we did a lot of the whole Spotify top lists in there. Uh, mine was embarrassing. I listened to basically like one genre of music. Mm. But yeah, we have a listening channel in there that anyone can access. So these are all the free channels, the um, the channel that anyone can participate in. Audiobook. We have animals where we get to post pictures of your pets in there. Um, they're really cute doggos and kitties and a rabbit as well often. We have a travel section where if you have, oh, hello, Heavenly Wave. Long time listener, first time chatter. Glad to see you. Did Beatum, did Beatum make that poll? That's good, that's good. Uh, we have a travel section. So if people have like, usually post photos of their view, um, we have obviously members from all over the world. I mean, Darian's from the Caribbean, so, or Caribbean. Um, so anytime anyone's traveling, you send a photo and everyone gets to kind of see where in the world you are. It's been really, really cool over COVID as well, especially if you're looking at the same four walls day in, day out. We also have a good vibes only channel. So if you just need a little bit of a pick me up, if you're feeling kind of bad, if you just need good vibes only, we've got that channel. If we do exclamation mark discord, you can join it that way. We've got the link right there. We also have a support channel in here, and that is if you're feeling a little bit bummed out about something, if you need a place to vent, if you wanna be vulnerable, if you have an instance that you just kinda of need to ugh, get it out. Um, your Discord's called Good Vibes Only? I love that, we're on the same wavelength. We're on the same wavelength with that. Um, but the support's really good, and the reason why I've allocated it to a separate channel instead of um, general, with support, if you are venting or if you're sharing, it's a two-way communication. So when you post in support, um, if you're going into support, it means that you consent to listening so that we're not floodlighting, so that we're not trauma dumping, so that we're not making people kind of like a part of a conversation that they didn't sign up for. So by having a specific support channel there, it's the two way street of someone that wants to share or unload and someone that's willing to listen as well. So that's a really good channel that we have. Uh, we've got a bombshells channel that's for anyone who identifies as a woman to, I mainly talk about all the thirsty boys in my books that I read, all the pretty boys. Uh, and how I'm obsessed with The Witcher. So that's what, that's what, and we talk about hair. We talk about makeup. We talk about, um, you know, trying to get our hair done during a pandemic, things like that. But it's the kind of conversations that, you know, it's a majority male discord. So it's like, we have our own little area where we can do our later thing. Uh, we have a Twitch channel and that's a lot of the time um, where people will talk when I'm doing a Twitch stream. Uh, and we post clips from the Twitch stream there as well. Uh, we also have a Punderwear channel. Oh, KP Dubs, the mug looks amazing. Uh, I have a merchandise channel uh, called Punderwear. So anyone who purchases it, uh, it adds to the feed there. But if anyone wants to make a pun, it's very welcome there as well. We also have a looking for group channel. So anyone who's looking to team up on video games or tabletop, uh, we have a section there so you can find other like-minded people. And then we have our Twitter feed that posts so that you can catch up all of the Geek Bomb feed there. The Patreon only channels. Sorry, again, if you're listening on the book club, you can totally dip out if you want to. Oh, Vaden, gifting a sub to Euphoria Lee. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, that's just the free section. So that's what everyone gets access to. But if you sign up as a Patreon backer, even if it's just the $5 a month tier, the lowest tier that we have, you get access to what's your power. So it's the recommendations channel. So anything that you're playing, watching, reading, we compile a list and we ask everyone every month what you're currently playing, watching, reading. So everyone can talk about what you're consuming in that way. And then we have a dedicated playing and watching and reading channel. So when we talk about books and the book club stuff, and when we're talking throughout the week about Thierry uh, reading ahead um, and acknowledging that, that all happens in the reading section. And then we have that book club chat. 
Uh, so it's the voice channel where everyone uh, who signs up for that section is able to talk in this live stream. So we're able to communicate um, and participate in that way. Uh, and then Patreon chat as well for that $5, you get a feedback area. So because you've invested in Geek Bomb, um, you get to provide feedback on ways that we can improve. And then every tier gets their own channel as well. We also have a D&D channel uh, because D&D is really big with Fungeons and Flagons, shows that I do. So D&D Talk goes in there. Uh, we also do a monthly watch party for the $10 and above channel. So every single month we nominate a movie and we do a watch party for that. Uh, Gory, our community manager, she runs a game of D&D for $40 and higher. So we've got an ongoing monthly D&D campaign. And then $80 and higher, we're meeting on Friday, guys. We do a hangout. And that is um, once every three months for about two hours, we just literally hang out. I get to know my top tier backers um, so that when I see names come up, I can tell you right now that, you know, Vade and Jimmy and I have a walking challenge where we're trying to hit X amount of miles and kilometers every single week. We all play Pokemon Go together. <laughs> um, but I'm invested in uh, what's going on in the Guardians' lives, uh, which is really, really cool. And I love getting my updates as well. Uh, for free also, we have the spoilers channels. So Star Wars spoilers, Marvel spoilers, and DC spoilers. So when a show or a movie comes out, that's a place to do it. So you can avoid getting spoiled on the uh, Twitter. But it, we've got a dedicated chat so that you're not going to wreck anyone else's day by talking about it. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of like our Discord. Lots of wholesome content. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, well, it looks like we've got our books lined up for the next few months, which is really cool. Uh, everyone who is in the reading section, thank you for so much. Thank you so much for being in the reading section. Uh, thank you for so much. Thank you so much for being in the reading section. Uh, thank you for so much. Thank you so much for being Mm. We've got the recommendations doc in there. Keep adding to that. Um, there's a lot of books, a lot of recommendations. I know that Lisa, um, I know that was me. I opened up Twi Twitch because I want to see who we can raid into. Um, a lot of good recommendations in there. Like I said, it's about seven years of book club books worth more. That's 12 years of book club books. We've got a lot to choose from. Um, we'll see you over in the Geek Bomb Goodreads as well. I'm going to link that again for everyone. Join our Goodreads book club. I'll see everyone next Wednesday, 5 p.m. PT, to talk Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. It's going to be awesome. Uh, join our Discord. Join our Geek Goodreads. Why is Trisha on now? That can't be right. It's too late. She doesn't stream at night. Who should we raid into as well? Whose day can we make? That's all right, Skull Cleaver. Uh, Jason Charles Miller. He's raided me a couple of times, so I guess I can return the favor. Every Monday night, he does a music show. Jason Charles Miller, big on Geek and Sundry, if you're a fan of Geek and Sundry. He's a musician. He's very talented, very amazing. I say we go raid... Jason Charles Miller. Give him the Geek Bomb special. Drop those bombs. Make his day. There he is. He's got his guitar out. Eee! It's like a free concert. It's so cool. Yes, I will hydrate. Peace out, everybody. Lovely to meet you too, euphorially. I'll see you in the Discord, I hope. Uh, thank you to everyone who stayed on for an extra 40 minutes. <laughs> oh, I've missed you guys so much. See you next week. Bye, everyone. Hey, bye, Discord. Don't talk for now. Thank you, everyone. I can't believe you all stayed for so long. Well, it's a good conversation. Why wouldn't I stay around? <laughs> it is a good convo. Thank I appreciate you guys so much. So much. I appreciate that you appreciate us. Yeah, we're all happy to see you back as well. Yeah. I've got a good feeling about this year, everyone. Got I'm lucky my dad didn't cut the internet. Yeah, <laughs> so am I. <laughs> oh. Yes, that's very true. Um, I, uh, Thierry, I'm sorry that we didn't talk about Summer Night all that much tonight. We had a really cool chat, though. I really dug it. It's 
fine. It made me reflect on my youth. And uh, if I was part of the male toxic... toxic uh,